Brr, bow, bow. That funky chopper sound. Got a, I like kind of like that rhythm a little bit, don't you? <laughs> don't you though? <laughs> don't you just like that rhythm? <laughs> the rhythm, Joseph. The rhythm. So we have a conversation to get into that we started. Um, oh, we started. Yeah, was that the opening? Yeah, that was oh, the opening. I did not. I thought you were just <laughs> being ignorant. No, we start yeah. with music. That's like how traditional things go. Right? No, that's true. Uh, I'm just gonna start with this dude singing drill lyrics from for the foreseeable future. I honestly thought you were just taking that to record to the soundboard. N- no, I'm going to. I'm going okay. to. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, so, uh, welcome back to Nerve Rage Radio. Uh, this is episode 389. I have Chris Pinkerton with me. If you're nasty. And Uncle Dolphin with me. Yo. Uh, and uh, we just did a video that you will be seeing tomorrow, I think. I don't know about that. Maybe. No, I have no maybe idea, not. Man. You might be seeing it a week from tomorrow. Um, You'll see it sometime. Yeah. You'll see it come up. Yeah. It's like uh, the scheduling. But no, listen, there's not a lot of stuff on Bobby's YouTube, but it'll definitely be. It. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you definitely notice now. It won't yeah. be lost in the sauce. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a whole separate conversation, though, by the way. Like sauce. You, well, yeah, that too. But I like, like vodka sauce. This day. I mean, this week. Bang, bang. This week, for instance, I had a review go up Monday. Okay. Uh-huh. A review go up today. Yeah. And I have a review going up tomorrow. Yeah. That's too- All in the public place. No, you're not. M- mainline stuff. Are you doing mainline stuff for, in, um, for, for, I was going to say for Instagram. I don't know why, but are you doing it for Patreon only? Mainline stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. The pub- I have something coming tomorrow. I don't know if you have yet. Well, I, I would be interested in reviewing it regardless, though. Mm-hmm. But the public space, I'm only putting Masterpiece Reviews, Nerve Rage, and Dummies. But it's enough it's to lot. make like two to three to four videos a week sometimes. You know, right. so like, you know, can I live? Hit a lick. I told you 96 that I came to take this shit and I did. Handle my biz. Scramble like Randall with his. Cunningham. But the only thing running is numbers and bam. Mm. Jigga held you down six summers. Damn, where's the love? You know what I mean? Um, but we had a conversation for this top five video of Chick Flicks, which is which was great. And I had a great time. In, in, um, That's what I always do. A, well, a, yes, but a far more... Uh, kind of cerebral and thought-provoking conversation than I expected it to be. Mm-mm-mm. But it spawned this uh, conversation of what is a chick flick and how do you define it and, you know... Vers- Webster's Dictionary. Well, that might be worth looking look at. It up. Um, Probably more like Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, or that. Um, you know, versus what is a romantic comedy, what is a uh, straight comedy, what is the dude version of a romantic comedy, what is, uh, a, you know, the drama, how does that fit in, etc. And... Um, you know, there, we had. I think there were some discrepancies to our list, uh, to my yes. own. You well, know, here's the official Wikipedia entry for this. Because if you type "chick flick versus chick flick versus rom com," pops up. Uh-huh. Women are typically portrayed in chick flicks as sassy, noble victims, or klutzy twenty something. <laughs> <laughs> Romantic common rom coms are often also chick flicks. However, rom coms are typically respected more than chick flicks because they are designed to appeal to men and women. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't so I would say then that Forgetting Sarah Marshall and About a Boy are both in the rom-com category okay. and not in the chick flick category. Yeah. Hindsight, Bobby. Yeah. Hindsight. We, if only we would have taken five seconds before. Oh, man. <laughs> we could have amended our list slightly. It's more interesting without it. Though. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. But like, you know, where I was getting caught up, when, when I initially, <laughs> I mean, maybe this is sexist of me in hindsight, my brain went movies with girls in it. You know, and like <laughs> movies usually have girls in it. My, well, like majority. So no submarine movies. You know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but my first Crimson Tide. My first. That means something different to a lady. I know. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to be something different to Shark um, Week to Alabamans. <laughs> my first two um, things that came to my mind were Girl Interrupted. And Joe, uh, the movie that we both share, con- a con- a con- a Casino, for. Casino, no, but close, uh, Joy Luck Club, <laughs> okay. and 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 like I, I like I, I, I like Fuck. I like both of those movies a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I had to wrestle with myself and ask myself, like, is this really a chick flick? And I don't think it is. It's I think drama. They're, they're heavy dramas. Um, female focused drama. Female focused drama. Yes, which doesn't necessarily make it a chick flick. I think that Webster's does a much better job than my than my defunct or default brain. Did. Bobby, when you're wrestling with yourself, what's your finishing move? Um, <laughs> self, is it self doubt? Uh, no, well, or, yeah, or, or, or <laughs> usually reach for a sock off the floor. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that lower back will get you every time. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on on those things on those times? But I, I always I used to be like all not all. 
chick flicks are rom coms, but all rom coms are chick flicks. Mm-hmm. But I guess this is not the case. Yeah, there's really actually not- a Venn diagram where they're separate yeah. things. Yeah, which is a new th- in new Chris, piece of information to me. Chris suggested prick flick. Pr- yeah, um, no, I I read that on the internet. Yeah, so yes, prick, yes. A, pl- a prick flick would be I think we're calling like Something the Judd Apatow suite of films yes. and the yeah. Fairly Brothers stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. I- uh, for some reason, I thought you, was, Webster's kind of put a pin in that I'm conversation. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's because we it. always often just talk out of our asses for 30 minutes and then find out that you could have just <laughs> find it find yeah. out in five yeah, seconds. Probably. I'm sure we'll get we'll get uh, actually, but that's fine. So uh, it was entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it was good while it lasted, Chris. It was. <laughs> that's <laughs> what she said. <laughs> so to speak. Well, yeah. Uh, so Joe, you got your coffee first. Chris, how was your week? I will. I will keep on going on this this path we're talking about about about. Okay rom-coms I, I watched a couple of things one on purpose one just happened to be because i do have i do have tv and it's you know put it on sometimes random things uh i watched a movie on amazon it had been highly promoted okay um it stars uh jennifer lopez and she ja- she i saw some picture of her she oh, looks amazing bro, still. it's incredible it doesn't mm-hmm I'll, I'll get to that. Brown and, don't frown. And <laughs> money also helps. <laughs> it does. And the the lead uh, male is Josh Duhamel. Dumel. Okay. The, the, he was in the first Transformers movies. He's the army guy. Good sure. looking. Yeah. You know oh, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife thought he was um, Timothy Oliphant because they look similar. The guy who plays Cobb Vanth, one of your favorite from your favorite oh, God. Disney, yeah. a Star Wars series. Um, it's called Shotgun Wedding. It's on Amazon. You can watch it I right now. I've seen those commercials now too, but. <sighs> It, it definitely is a fun romp. I'll just say that. I mean, it's they go to some private island for a wedding, and there ends up being pirates. Lenny Kravitz shows up as the ex boyfriend. Wow! It ends up well. I won't spoil the movie, but I probably just did. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, it's just silly fun with hand grenades and and uh, you know villains with masks and Jennifer Lopez. There's Ass. actually a scene so um, reaching out of a cupboard. Yes, yes, that scene. Where she's reaching up for something. Um. Uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Stifler's mom. I can't uh-huh. remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lee. She's she's in there. She's uh, the male lead's mother, and she at one point she walks in and Jayla Jayla's in panties and a t shirt, and she says, "I just gotta ask, is it genetics or what?" Because <laughs> she's like fifty something, and yeah. holy shit, it's incredible. Yeah, sure. Um, that was uh, that was fun. I mean, Kelly and I watched that on Sunday morning, uh, and then. I don't remember what day. Somehow I ended up changing the channel from what I was watching and um, just flipping through. I saw the, the you guys are familiar with the Lifetime Network. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'd, th- I'd say that they are definitely aiming towards chick flicks. Chick flicks. For now, sure. Um, obviously, the Hallmark Channel also capitalizes uh, I, this around the holidays. I feel like they're the same channel. Or and, and I think, <laughs> and who knows, they may be owned by the same company. But I saw the name of this film that was on... Lifetime, and I'm like, I have to at least see what this is. It's called, are you ready? Mm. Deranged Granny. <laughs> that sounds like there's something on sci fi. <laughs> it. And a common occurrence, probably, too. <laughs> so, yes. so, so the, the, let me give you the premise. There's this young couple. Um, the, the woman has children from a previous relationship mm. and is, is engaged to this other gentleman. Well, the, the fiance, he has a mother. Who is batshit crazy mm. and does all this crazy shit? She kills people. She um, gaslights everybody. She says these very passive aggressive things to everybody, and it turns the kids against them. Oh my god! I, I ended up watching the rest of this movie. I, I probably started like a quarter of the way into it, just because it was so it, intriguing. Yeah. And watching the commercials for the shows that they're like. There's a real audience out there for this shit, apparently, because they're pumping out these shows and it's a lot of home invasion stuff and, you know, it's crime that's happening against women. But I guess people are watching it, but it was just fascinating to kind of, you know, peek into another demographic, so to speak, yeah. to see how they're they're pushing this stuff to people. It, but it, deranged granny, how funny. It does also seem like women are obsessed with, like, the killer series slash yeah. documentaries podcasts like, podcasts yeah. etc yeah you know fucking yeah. women man it's gruesome man i uh, watched uh, a korean sci-fi film called jung e okay sounds familiar it is a sci-fi movie um it's on netflix uh yes yeah yeah it is i'm trying to think what the premise was 
it wasn't great to be honest um the world's come to some sort of end a bunch of people have left the planet to go live in the stars and some people have come back down and you've got this basically this one character and they're making her relive this stuff over and over come to find out they can just take your brain out and put it in another body oh, that's amazing. and they're trying to build all these troops and stuff it i I don't know what they do different, but the the visuals that they produce on these sci fi shows, the Korean uh, uh, produced ones, mm-hmm. is, they're fucking great. Yeah, I love like it. Uh, there was one about I think Space Sweepers or something like that yes. came out a while back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looked fucking With the robot it looked and stuff better than you know anything else you see on television at least. Yep, um, and this one was much of the same. <laughs> um, it, it leaned real heavy into the to the to the the, the, the uh, visual effects. I thought maybe a little more than. Um, than it would. Um, did you guys? Um, did you guys have yesterday morning? It snowed just like yeah, enough, yeah. enough to piss you off. Like I had to go out and scrape the car, and of course I don't have a fucking ice scraper. All I have is like. You know when you go to like Books of Million or whatever they give you like the discount Books cards. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was I was trying to do that to scrape off the ice, but it would only take fifteen percent off. <laughs> So I've been holding that one, waiting on the weather. <laughs> yeah, if I'm being honest, played the long game. There you go. It worked. It worked. That was good. Right. Yeah. Thank, you. Very good. thank you. Thank you. It worked. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, continue working on diorama projects. Um, my wife's a little under the weather, so I'm waiting on her to feel better so we can get Switch the website open. It's no time to be sick. I know, Get right? Yeah. Um, I read more on the the Pinkerton book uh, that was oh, reading. Yeah. It was called yeah, it's it's History. Yeah, it's History. History.com. In- exactly. It's called Inventing the Pinkertons, actually. Um, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's something else. It's kind of it's kind of depressing. I mean, like because the the name got so tarnished after there were some labor riots and stuff up in Pennsylvania, and all these people got killed. And of course, he said, she said, but you know, two hundred people get killed on both between both sides, and wow. it's them being nasty. But good, good people on both sides. <sighs> Maybe <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to read a book every month. I know I'm behind right now, but I I really enjoying this. I think I want to read a. If anybody has any suggestions for it, I think I want to read a Teddy Roosevelt biography because that dude I, seems I can, to have led an interesting life i can ask a buddy of my huge teddy roosevelt fan oh, read a right. ton of shit on him okay i'll, I'll ask if, he, cool. if there was one I'll send that'll de- that'll definitely work um so if anyone listened last week you know i'd had a pretty shitty week because i had to have my colonoscopy and yeah you know there's there's the polar opposite of that i guess would be what i what i found out i had on friday and that's pink eye yeah so that was I went away pretty fast it did. It it cleared up um, once I got you know the the drops or whatever the antibiotic drops they make, um, which I'll tell you on a Saturday you know I pay for health insurance. Surprise! I guess most of us do. Yeah. Um, my primary physician does not do any. They have a after hours line, and the doctor called me, and he's like, "This is legit for emergencies. Like, <laughs> I can't prescribe you anything." But Kelly did some digging around in our insurance, like the website or whatever, and found the telehealth place and they did a call with me and i showed them my eye they're like oh yeah you got pink eye send me prescription picked it up and it almost immediately was better well that's so, good that you got it sorted yeah so just know if you uh get poop in your eye you can yeah i'm gonna blame it it's on not true, though. And then wipe no, your eye. you can it, get it from a lot of stuff including yeah. stds i found out oh really yeah well, maybe it's that. that's not why it's funny i went to <laughs> i went to the ophthalmologist and it started bothering me a little bit after that and i they blow air in your eye or whatever they blow <laughs> they do they, i don't yeah. I, oh, fuck. Wrong I thought it was done by a machine but it might have been the woman that she might have blown right in my eye and put poop in my eye yeah i mean better a woman blowing your eye than just blow, somebody blowing a wad in your eye oh I thought you come were say. on let's go I, i'm sorry uh <laughs> come on who um and uh the last thing i got is um I watched the latest episode of The Bad Batch, <laughs> and it was not great. No, it sucked. It's uh, a little wookie. The, I mean, it, it had some heartfelt moments in it, but it's, it, uh, it's same old. Yep. Same old. I agree. They had that one home run this this season. The first two episodes I thought were, were Fine. pretty good. The third one I thought was fucking fantastic. Agreed. And, and then we're back to the Freak of the Week, which yep. I'm pretty sure is just their MO. Yeah, I And agree. it's not for me. I agree. That's fine. I'm still... I'm going to watch it every week, just... To have the content done and, you know, yeah. see where we're going from here. Yeah, same. So I'm super interested in that time period. Right, I know. And the more, I mean, even if I'm just gleaming little pieces here and there. Yeah. You know, like the Empire's taking over, but it's like, oh, they're still doing racing here. They're still doing all this shit. Yeah. You know? I mean, because it's such a, I mean, it's supposed to be a whole galaxy, right? Like the it impact is. of, it's just like when people ask if I vote for certain things or other, I'm just like, 
when was the last time you really feel the difference after like some shit or other change that's it that's right in, in politics or whatever yeah your life is basically the same the next day that's it for, for, for at least a while to come before any ripples are felt yeah so like in a, in a galaxy a lot of the, the, those people are probably not doesn't care who the government is anyway yeah and I think like even you know in Andor seeing the scenes with Mon, Mon Mothma Mon Mothra <laughs> whatever <laughs> don't gaslight me Joe <laughs> You know, the other politicians are like, you know, this is happening, you know, it's for this and it's for that. And it's just like, you know, horrible shit happens before you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph? Oh, shit. That's it? Mine's That's it. Super sure. Light too. Like, to be honest with you, I haven't done much of anything. I've been laying around a lot. So, let's see. I, I watched a playthrough of Cyberpunk over a long time because it's on Twitch. Yeah. Finally ended last night. Got which which ending did they do? Because the of, fear the reaper, the like the hard one, the one where you have to like the, f- the what? fear the reaper. That's, fear the, that's, that's a secret like, ending. Who do you go I thought into you said the, fear the reaper. I was like, well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> who do they go into Koneki Plaza with? Like, because you can go in with Pan Am and the the nomads. No, or, nobody. It was the one way to sit there. The one way had to sit there with uh, Johnny for like five minutes before he would say some shit to you. Oh, you just the one you just you don't answer and you just sit. Yeah, there. you sit there for five minutes and then like you end up having to fucking take out the whole fucking. Place by yourself and kill Adam Smasher. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And I, then, I haven't tried that one you, yet. I might try that. That's one. the. I mean, that's the, the hardest one. And then yeah. you get to choose what you want to do with your body and shit after that. But that it was my body. Was yeah, it was great to watch just because like it was it was it was hard ending and yeah. they were under leveled. So like it was several several tries over a couple of different streams before yeah. the final finish last night. Nice. But I yeah I and the ending was good. I enjoy, I enjoy that game. I I don't have the time or patience or energy i guess right now to, to play it, i actually but, uh, played it a bit this week i of was of course you did well no i i mean like <laughs> there's some stuff i know, like there's some like things to find i never finished i'm like i'm gonna finish all these i'll be so i tried to I, I played elden ring for a while again and it's just like i just i'm i can't happy. do anything yeah so i'm like fuck it i'm gonna put in a game i know how to play and i know where everything is and run around and be stupid shoot Sometimes people in the face. You gotta go where everyone knows your name bro mm-hmm. that's right and um, watch another Let's Play. Watch uh, Dead Space and remake. It's fucking fantastic. Really? And I also don't realize how old that fucking game is. Like the original Dead Space mm-hmm. still feels like new-ish to me, but it's like fucking 15, 20 years old, some shit like that. Yeah. But the remake is really good. So if you're looking for a game yourself, uh-huh. I, I would I might pick that up. Okay. It's a third person, so it's behind the back. Right, right, right. Um, I think the story is the story is good. The, yeah, I think it's, the new I, graphics are fucking great. I've heard great things about it. It's good, and this deep the war. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's an anime. There's a, well, I'm assuming they're gonna remake Death Space two at this point. Also, the third game is not well received. I guess that's what put a hiatus on the franchise mm-hmm. until this remake. So hopefully they'll make two and maybe like either skip three or make a new three. Right, right, right. Which they have the ability to. So I'm I'm like some people it's a controversy. Some people aren't enjoying all these remakes. But I think majority of people are. I think well, some I mean, things are des- deserves a remake where you know the property is great and they were just limited by technology exactly. back in the day. And they do uh, uh, all these good remakes have like expanded lore or mm-hmm. like added stuff. It's not exact frame by frame remake. They make it more interesting. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's worth replaying. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. You if, play the first, I, I mean, don't know who the fuck's going to remember details from a video game fifteen years ago. Maybe. Probably Bobby. Well, you, some people play a lot, yeah. also because it's so good. Like, there's some games like Fallout or like Witcher where I've played multiple times. I know the vibes. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's still worth. I mean, if you loved it enough the first time, you're gonna want to play it again when it's updated. And then just a lot of Monster Hunter. It's made, the only thing I've actually been doing actively is Monster Hunter. Nice. And so that's where you hunt monsters. That, that's the one. Yeah. You, okay. You, that's all you do. That's all you do. You just this really not misleading title. <laughs> there you go. Because Ap- sometimes, some, named. Sometimes they are like <clears throat> misleading. Like it's called Monster Hunter, and you, you go find out you like collect fucking garden shits. Not here though, buddy. Not here. We're hunting monsters. That's and that's right. it. Nope. That's it. That's all we uh, got. I've quite been enjoying. I'll probably be on this for a while. Nice. Because it's a grindy game. It's one of those. Japanese born games where the style is that you just keep playing it. Yeah. That's no that's not much too much point to it other than it's just fucking fun. Nice. And yeah, that is all I've done this week. Unfortunately. Uh let's see. Um so I watched The Last of Us. 
Oh, I almost started that yesterday, but I'm, I've heard it's really heartbreaking, and I'm like, I don't know if I want that. So the uh, right, it, yeah, yeah, that's which is fair. Um, yeah, I do have a question. So I think they may. I can't see how the game could have covered it. There was a episode three. Mm-hmm. Um, Obi Wan has the high ground. Yes. No, I'm kidding. Ep- <coughs> episode three, but you, you underestimated his power. Yes, yes, there was that. Um, and maybe he didn't. Yeah. To be fair, uh, hubris. Yeah. What my call? Episode three. There, it you are following these main characters, which is the man and the girl, Joel and Ellie. Yep. Not good with names, and uh, then you divert to this other story for like an hour and a half. This episode is long as fuck. It's like a whole movie. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Um. And it's about two characters that you've never seen before, and you go through. One is like a um, prepper, Doomsday Pepper, and yeah. he traps this other dude, uh, not on purpose, but he has like booby traps around his property, and a dude falls into a booby trap, and he goes out like to what you know what's your angle, cause, and um, <clears throat> finds out the dude just like is just looking for help, and he's on his way somewhere else. He made a mistake, stepped in the wrong foxhole, as it were. And this uh, the prepper gets him out. The dude somehow talks him into like letting him stay, get cleaned up for a minute. T- talks him and all that. They have dinner, and then they um, like uh, they have sex that night, hmm. and then that grows into a loving relationship between these two dudes, right? And they set up a whole little little place for themselves in this very abandoned stuff you skip ahead of a certain amount of years they've got you know f- like they're farming the land they've got little stuff set up and uh and then you follow them all the way through to to their demise you know which hmm. is which is not a ugly demise it's a it's a arguably beautiful demise okay um just for joel and ellie mm-hmm. ellie to uh, eventually come upon their property and have access to a lot of their stuff mm. and and it it, it kind of shows that they have a bit of a prior relationship <laughs> Um, Joel does with with them like he knew them prior hmm. um, and it's good it's a good episode it kind of feels a little weird because it's so it's such a divergence yeah. and it's like it's really detailed and it's beautiful in it's own right it's almost a standalone yeah so it's like a spin-off like and I think yeah. um, but does that have any that, that's not in the game okay that's not the game only covers Joel and Ellie main, basically do, do they ever come to a house where somebody has died and they find all these supplies or anything that would be relevant that happens Pretty I'm guessing yes. that's the house, and they gave these p- folks now a whole backstory. That's cool. I, yeah. I like yeah. shit like that. That's, yeah, that, that's like the we're talking about remix just now. Like add shit, mm-hmm. and that really could, don't change shit. Add shit. Mm-hmm. You know, adding details like that could really spread a story out. Yeah, infinitely. Yeah. And and it and was also it was a world. It's I think it's one of those things where like as because a lot of times when I'm watching this, like I'm almost like I, I and I've said this before on here, but I I can see the level here. Like yeah. I know what they're doing. The yeah. layout. That, yeah, yeah, like there's like one where like they're like hiding they're like trying to escape from a compound they have to like stay out of the light and stay like, it's like flashlights is like sweep across and they have to like duck underneath go into a tunnel yeah. get a, i'm like that's probably a level yeah but um this one i was like this would be really a weird level to play yeah it's just a random <laughs> ass like a, story. A, a beautiful story yeah, yeah. of uh love um but uh but yeah so it was an, i was gonna ask if there was anything so that was that was that i, I, I watched it it was great um yeah, I, I plan to watch the series just because i know it's going to be somewhat different yeah. but like i just yeah i just i just hope it uh i don't it's not tainted because i played the game right right because some there's some <clears throat> like like you said it's emotional there's some tragic stuff and like going into it already knowing what it is, is i'm gonna have it's going to be unavoidable for me to compare to the original scene. So Gary... How, how much it impacted me originally. Gary is, has played it. Surprise. Uh, me too. <laughs> Actually, last time he was here, came to find out he like plays fairly he plays regularly. Games, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't, um, didn't, didn't seem like he'd play a lot. Yeah, agreed. Um, anything. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Except for sports. Um, but he is enjoying the show thoroughly, but he does find the Ellie character off putting from what he knows of her in the game. Yeah, like, she's very charming, likable in yeah. the game. Like Um so uh another thing I am up to date on Your Honor. I highly recommend not, it. Not not the judge. Not 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 the judge, but Your Honor. It's fucking great. 
it's a great show with great actors and great storytelling and great characters and great fucking cinematography and just great, 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 great. Um, it's one of them to Billings, you know, who I've said that. I think he watched the first season based on my, rep- uh, my recommend. Um, I have a little bit of a story regarding Iron Studios this week. <clears throat> so you've been, you've been loving this shit. I, I love this. Shit. Love it. Yep. Love it. Can't get enough. Um, and, and I think it's fair to say at some level, Joe, many people can't get enough or perhaps they don't make enough, but I'm going to circle back to that. So all of the kind of modern iron studio stuff comes with these like very dynamic bases, Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, and it adds something to it because they're smaller statues. It puts them up a little higher. It's, it offers an awful lot. And visually make differentiate them to like an action figure. Agreed. Agreed. Now, some of the older iron studios, if you'll direct... Uh, your attention to, uh, there's a cat woman up there, but they just, um, I can't really find, I can't really find a great representation. There's a, um, but they, they came on, basically they're very similar to those Cotabakia, Green Lantern, and Sinestro, like just a black uh, base, base. generic base. Yes. That sat on. So I, I say that to say this, I ordered a, um, pre-ordered, mind you, pre-ordered a power girl. Okay. Iron Studio statue. Uh, I thought the sculpt looked great. I love the pose and everything. Uh, I like a lot of Justice Society stuff. Um, I think it's interesting. But um, or pre-ordered it. This is probably a year ago. Some change. But I always thought it was weird that it had a black base. Mm-hmm. And it has a little bit of like an air effect because she's flying to mm-hmm. like boost her up. Yeah. Um, but I've had it pre-ordered forever. And I got an email from BBTS saying my pre-order was canceled because Iron Studios did not make enough to ship to satisfy vendors. Really? Wow. So That's weird. I agree. Because it's such so long ago, they didn't know how many they need to make. I agree. So I go on to eBay, and I'm looking to see if there's any out on eBay yet. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm starting to question: Did I is this was this a re-release and I missed it? Because the bases look like the old school bases, um, and I can only find like five vendors carrying it, all for like twice the price. Hmm. Guess where? Oh my god, I changed it. I thought I changed it. <laughs> that might have kind of worked. Though. Yeah, uh, yeah, if it's... you're right. But that's not what I wanted. Hold on one second. Sorry, listeners. I'm usually better than this. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's, like, that's now good. We're, now, that's we're, good. Now, now we're now we're at least so, on, the, on so, the right path. So where were they available? They were available. Now you put water into a cup. Of course, it becomes the cup. You- and it's, it's, to those that are new here uh, in China, and I'm when I clicked on all, I checked out every single one of the Chinese vendors mm-hmm. that were carrying it, and it all like when you clicked on more information, sent you to like a storefront. Mm. It's just like it's just. Red flag after red flag after red flag. Like you, there's absolutely no evidence that you have this in hand. Yes. Um. So I wrote one of the vendors, and they wrote me back and said, "You'll never believe this, Joe. They do have it in hand, but they're down to their last one." Oh no! <laughs> I know. I know that's surprising. Um. <clears throat> really puts the pressure on, if you know what I mean. Um. But I'm holding out. Uh. Shout out to Dennis. He um. You know, we'll get entitled on the head sculpt for Dennis. He's uh he's at some trade show, some toy statue trade show in Germany right now. Mm-hmm. And Iron Studios has a booth there. And I was like, ask them if they have any there. Mm-hmm. You know, and they didn't, but at least he fucking tried. Did he, did he ask for any clarification around that? Piece? No, but I asked him too, but I oh, feel okay. like he's got a lot going on. I, I don't you. know if he's going to get to that or not. I wrote them, uh, Iron Studios, and I was like, you know, told him the story that I just told you guys. And they they had like you know and I think they're a Brazilian company, huh. um, so like Iron <clears throat> Studios is yeah. So like I don't you know I think there's a bit of hmm. a um, I think I might have, I might know that I have known that there's a bit of a language barrier, but they said uh, hey uh, it's unfortunately has not yet arrived in Brazil, but it has been released in the USA and it is sold out. And I wrote back. I said I had it pre-ordered at Big Bad Toy Store, and they canceled my order. I'm trying to see if I can secure it elsewhere. Can you help me buy it from any location? Mm. And then uh, they haven't heard back. They haven't heard back. And this is days now, so I'm guessing it's a wrap. So I, I don't know how these statues. Or I guess statues are more just like made to order nowadays. But it 
The bigger ones, at least, still, mm. at, like they used to be. All statues used to be numbered and limited. Is this the right. one you're looking for? Yep. This is it? Yep. Okay. There, so it w- wouldn't be too surprising if, like, vendors oversold. But, like, I don't think these are. Like, It the, doesn't feel like it. No, none of them come with numbers or certificates, right? Mm, uh, don't get me lying. You know, I don't pay attention. Yeah, because, like, usually I order the bigger stuff. And it's always like, oh, there's only, like, 400 of these or 2,000 mm-hmm. of these. Like, even back in Bowen statues, they're, mm-hmm. they're always a limited amount because before the bolt breaks down, basically. Yeah, I think even these collectibles are all numbered. Yeah, so maybe that, you know, people were just overzealous and making pre-orders that they weren't able to secure. So anybody that's, out that's there? A, that's a new one for BBTS. I haven't gotten something like that from BBTS before. I've gotten that from other places. Yeah, me neither. So there's anybody out there that can help me or link me up with a Iron Studios 110 scale power girl. I would appreciate it. Keep your eyes open for me if you could. Um, let's see. I got a, okay. I got a. Uh, I got a couple now. I got a couple little funny funny stories. Both center around Jaina this week. <laughs> so Jaina had a uh, a party here on Friday night. Here, okay. here, 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 okay. here. And uh, with her group that she walks to school with, they call it the Walking Squad. And who uh, calls it the Walking Squad? They all do. Oh, they all do. Yeah, okay. the Walkers. Um, I'm going to say something. I'm going to preface this with: I don't mean any harm in this statement. It's just an observation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not racist, but it, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, what? homosexuals were to our parents generation and trans uh and Mm non-binary are to our generation furries are to my children's generation wow so i'm gonna i'm gonna break this down right please do you ready this and this is just me listening to them and observing them Mm -hmm. right so like I don't, and I can't. I'm not speaking for anybody else's parents, right? But um, my father's a pretty level-headed, even-keeled dude, and he probably made some gay jokes growing up, mm-hmm. you know, because he wasn't like a quote-unquote man's man. But like, he never dropped the f bomb, mm. and he was always like, you know, I don't care what you do in the privacy of your own home, or you know, like just kind of like that. Yeah, like it's not, it's none of my business. Yeah. Um. My mom, on the other hand, like I've told people before, she comes from a very Irish and Italian family, and they fucking hate everybody. It's best to left, best left that, best leave that stone unturned. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one time she caught my brother Ben dancing to a Backstreet Boys record and just about lost her fucking mind. Um, <clears throat> but she's not a great person, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've heard, we've yeah. heard. So, um, so moving on. Um, our generation, and speaking generally, right, we don't give a shit about. I, I voted. One of the main reasons why I voted for Obama first term was because he said he was that was on his big ticket items was to make it a legal marriage between homosexual relationships. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Yes, you know, um, and you know, I didn't. You know, you saw people like, especially as like into college years, like around like the two thousands, like the rainbow, fl- all that shit, like yeah, kind of really it's like, it's like yeah, yeah, good for y'all, man. Like yeah. queer eye for the straight guys on TV, yes, you know, yes, Will yes. and Grace. It's like yep. you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. You're, you guys, are, everybody's good. Yep. You're good. I'm good. I just wish I could still crack some jokes on y'all, and y'all could crack some jokes on me. I want, mm-hmm. I want to eat some jokes too, so to speak. But like, I, you know, yeah, like eat it, you know. But like, um, I told you, I, I still want like like a, a gay dude to come in and like see like something that I've like like my my dick my decorating's fucked your up dick, your dick your dick my decorating <laughs> decorating heard. is fucked up and then have them be like straight <laughs> you know like you know, like my clothes don't match right or I'm dressed like shit and be like straight like I'm I'm with the jokes you know that's what makes it even yes you know um that's why the Chappelle show was so brilliant but back on track I feel like our generation with like a lot of the trans and um uh, non-binary is kind of like yeah look whatever you want to do like like if it doesn't hurt other people be right. happy just d- you don't need to rub it in my face so to speak every 10 <laughs> seconds about how fucking awful it is to have this experience i'm trying to give you your grace and an equal experience to everybody and just stay out of your way and right. respect your privacy and whatever just do me the same and respect your privacy to me yes you know but my kids are like they're heroes, you know. They're they're forging the flag, and you know they're pushing the envelope forward, and all that kind of stuff. 
but I was listening to them at the table, you know, Friday night, having a slice of pizza, saying like, you know, and then, you know, we have a couple furries at our school. <laughs> and like, I don't care if you're a furry, be a furry. Just like, don't talk about it all the time. <laughs> don't like, and I was like, wow. oh my God. Oh, wow, really? This is like history <laughs> repeating itself. But furry's wow. been around forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how yeah. are you a furry at school? Uh, I guess they talk just, about I guess, it. I, yeah, they just talk about it, and th- there's probably a maybe flag, just wear the, the a button, the, the tail, the tail, just in the ears. Yeah, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> God, I just want to get these jokes off, and then the furries can make jokes on me too. I heard they're very nice people. They're everywhere. Yeah, sure, no doubt. But it's just at it's every just, event you can never possibly go to. The furries it's just there. funny that like history repeats itself in this very particular way. It's very specific. Correct. Did I ever tell you guys a story about the furry convention in Huntsville that didn't happen? Mm mm. So Boy, let me tell you something. Much like the furries, I'm all ears. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> what into a cup. So they had rented the airport hotel for the convention, and you can't have a math at this point. It was post nine eleven prior to COVID. That's you know, I want I don't want to call it the sweet spot, but mm-hmm. uh you couldn't have a mask on your face within a certain feet of a gate and it, it was that close so they, right. had, they had to cancel it there, there was really no joke here that's legit what happened <laughs> that's crazy yeah <laughs> it is it is it's not as crazy <coughs> as other stories but. yeah um so anyway i'm off that i just thought it was funny um easy, easy targets I guess. we all have our uh <laughs> things to overcome i guess i mean um, are we in 10 years going to have like a furry movement yeah, well, yeah, well, so I'm, um, you know, and, and then and then there'll be something I'm imagining after that, and then after that, and and I think that every we got run out of issues at some point, right? I, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Not my lifetime, I guess. Yeah. Um. So I got a funny story, but once again about Jaina. Um. So I am uh, used my dog's preference in playing tug of war mm-hmm. because I'm more of a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I'm fucking Superman or some fucking body, but just you're stronger than your children. I'm probably. stronger than my children. I'm stronger than my wife. So she really enjoys playing tug of war with me, like truly. And I get tired, not physically tired, just bored. annoyed and kind of like, yeah, yeah I'm done. I'm yeah. done. Cause I, I get it for away from her and then I throw it. She gets it. She brings it back. And this one that she, her favorite one squeaks and she fucking puts her fucking snout right in my face and just squeaks it with her mouth <laughs> until I fucking re- re- agree to play. Smart dog. <laughs> so eventually I got up and just removed myself from, from the scenario. And then, uh, she took, uh, she took it over to Jaina. And then Laura said, look, you're good enough now, Jaina. And Jaina said, oh, my God, am I a Miri Sneaky Link? <laughs> <laughs> sneaky Link. <laughs> my God. Um, and then the last thing that I was just going to say, more so um, to the listeners, um, if anyone out there is interested in one of two chats, uh, like group chats, <clears throat> um, and, and, and I and, – and we have a rapport at some point. Like, if I've never heard from you, like, this probably wouldn't be the first, like, the, the way you want to introduce yourself. But I am f- considering, I'll tell you a long story of short. Um, you know, uh, there's a there are, there's a drill fan base that I'm familiar of, with. Of course. And a lot of times, like, we send links to each other, and it's like, hey, this is good. This is worth checking out, vice versa, whatever. It's, it's for you, it's not for you, whatever. But it's like somebody found something. And wanted, if, if anybody out there is a, is a drill fan and wants to be a part of that um, exchange, hit me up, let me know. I'm trying to build something there. Uh, likewise, same thing for fashion. Uh, I'm thinking about doing the same thing because I just recently, last week, like I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and stumbled across this like flash sale uh, of a of a brand that I like that was like everything was like seventy percent off. Oshkosh Bagosh, <laughs> yeah, Oshkosh Bagosh. They, they do mainly are in uh, overalls and uh, jumpers. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's the vibe. Corduroy's back. Yeah. Um, Primary colors. Yeah. Uh, uh, but brands, well, just, just, well, well, yeah. But it, first of all, there's something about corduroy because there's big news that corduroy's is making a comeback. Oh, I've heard. I've heard Bobby it, on Tell pillows. Us. Yeah, yeah. It's in all the headlines. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what the yeah. fuck it, headline. <laughs> I told that joke two years ago, but it's okay. <laughs> so sorry. It's fine. Um, I can't keep track of them all. I know you can't. So neither, over neither my can head. I, neither can I. Um, 
anyway, that being said, uh, same, so like this thing, I got this fucking hoodie. I bought, like I even told Laura, I was like, if you like one, just pick it out and put it. I'll, I'll buy it for you because Flex. because we, we can become a, yeah, yeah. because be, just because I mean they're like three hundred dollar hoodies that were like sixty bucks. Yeah, you know. So like, uh, if you're into that kind of stuff um, and want to like have a a little community of trading information only like i'm not looking for any chatty patties i'm looking for people that want to get the job done you get kicked out yeah you're gonna get kicked out i'm saying that right now we so that i don't hurt anybody that in our own yeah, group there chat. is this what is, is not a chatty patty experience that i'm looking for this is uh i found this record here it is or i found this sale here it is that's it or a new drop like this is dropping i haven't checked it out but here it is or these shoes are dropping on friday i haven't checked it out but here it is that's all I'm looking for. Let me know, and I'll try to organize it. And with that... That sounds like a lot of work, Bobby. <laughs> yes, but I think it could uh, be just because, like, you know... You need people, admins. People yeah. in a Facebook group. <laughs> people hit me up like, like, damn, I wish I would have known about that fucking sale. I would have got in on that, you know? And I bet, well, I didn't even know that you were in the fucking market, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so... Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, also, I've been listening to a lot of LL Cool J recently. <laughs> um, for uh, I heard he's hard as hell for uh the next Bobby Boogie Bop, and I can't believe we let him get away with a uh, head sprung where he said they called me Big L A, Big Silly. <laughs> I'm like, dude, no, they didn't. <laughs> no one ever called you either of those. Hey, Big Silly. <laughs> Last week I saw you at the mall standing by the payphone, about to make a call. Dude, what's that up? didn't age very well. <laughs> Big L A. Um. All right, and then I can get into Nerd Rage Radio Notes. So, um, actually, we have a fair amount to talk about. R- mostly in regard to Hasbro. Yep. So Hasbro, oh, bro, they lost. That's yeah, amazing. We're gonna amazing. get there. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna give you a full full platform, Joe, to take to take that. Um, but the first note is they had a lot of reveals over the past two weeks or week that we've been off. Um, Transformers reveals. I didn't give a shit about any of them. Did any of them speak to you? The uh, Insecticon. That's the okay. One I there got. you go. Yeah. There you go. Rest of it. I mean, it's the, the core class, which is their legend scale. Is several of those pieces, and and then it's just. I, I've said this from the, the the beauty of this legacy line is there might be a couple things I want in each wave, and that's it. You're right. I'm not. I'm not getting any bugs and you know things from. Like anything from Prime, I have never seen a lick of that show. So. Right. Actually, I saw the I saw it's, it's pretty good. I saw the I saw the pilot because The Rock was in it. Oh Christ! <laughs> um, He's everywhere, Bobby. GI Joe Classified. What did we get out of this? We got Snow Job. Which how did they get? Snow how did they get know. away with that? Yo, how yo, did they get away uh, with that? I don't know. You got Snow Job. You get um, uh, the, it looks like a Televiper with a Trouble Bubble mm-hmm. and uh, sh- uh, Scrap Iron with his rocket launcher. I would have preferred to just get the Televiper by itself. I'm going to be honest. No, just let me know. I'll take your trouble bubbles. No troubles, Bobby. Oh, okay. I'll take your yeah, trouble yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Um, and then who were the two? I don't know, even know the two that were like, looks like a male and a female or. A- <laughs> so, okay. This is a little bit of a complicated story. Okay. When we were children or when I was ch- a child, at least, cause you know, my teeth are long. Yes. Uh, G.I. Joe did a lot of mail aways. Save okay. your, clip your flag points and, and send this. They did something called uh, the figure's name was Steel Brigade, but you got to kind of write your own by it was your character. Oh. So you could have done the Bobby, you know, the name is Bobby Skullface. Right. And you live here and you do this and you got a file card. Well, years go by. Um, they let that license slip and a guy named Bobby Valla bought the license for that name along with Action Force. Right. Which I'm sure you're heard yes, of, which is yes. what G.I. Joe was called in England and other parts of the world. Um, so he has created that figure as part of his original Kickstarter. And now Hasbro is basically Making creating it, but they can't call it that. So it's, it's a it's, third party. Yeah, it's Steel Soldier or something. And a lot of people are pretty happy about it. Um, I could really care less about it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, going to be a pass for me. If it's a two-pack, that's going to be frustrating, I think. Because if I wanted one, it would be that original character. So who is this? This is a Cobra? That's Scrap Iron. Yeah. I don't, I don't know was, this character. Yeah, you do. He was in the cartoon all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you do. do. <laughs> so I think that's a pass for me, too. Okay. Because I'm running out of space. You'll recognize it if, if you watch any of the cartoons. Um, I think I'm in for Snow Job. And we, Pentecostal Church? Do you want to take it? No. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, on, like on, on the air. Um, so, yeah, Televiper. And snow job. Where you get where you getting your news from there, Bobby? Realm of Collectors. I pulled it right uh, up. Realm of Collectors on Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Shout out to Antoine. Um, 
And uh, just while he has it here pulled up, I'll go ahead and address uh, this Reveltech flash and reverse flash. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, those figures have come and gone for me already, but... Um, you know, if you compose them good, they look great. If you just have them standing there, their proportions are bananas. And then, uh, lastly, uh, there were Star Wars reveals. And as you might expect, in my opinion, at least for Black Series, lackluster. Um, I think the only thing that I was interested in was Kiati Mundi, which they had yeah. teased before. And the face sculpt's not great. Old dickhead, if you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought That's the weird. face looked very odd. It, it kind of looks like the new uh, Martin Luther King uh, memorial the statue. statue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heart yeah. Piece. <laughs> um, Throwing it over his shoulder, man. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm in for him. And none of the new pipeline. I don't think any of those did anything for me. Like just fucking luke with a grogu like mm -hmm. yeah they did a whole there's a whole like mandalorian of course this was hot i mean it's what sells i guess um i just happened to find this thing that hit me uh on the reddit nova uh, northern virginia every state's least favorite state so i haven't looked yet but what do you want to guess maryland's is least favorite state what well, it's least favorite maryland's least favorite state pennsylvania that would be my guess. I was thinking uh, fucking West Virginia. <laughs> okay. That would be, that was my next guess. Uh, so, or is it something to do with a sports rivalry, do you think? Maryland hates Virginia, it says. Okay. Um, I could see and so that does West Virginia. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then. What's Alabama hate? Okay. Themselves. All right, hold on one second. <laughs> I need you to do me a favor. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to take a. I think I know. I think Alabama's is going to be Tennessee because it's like a hat. So <laughs> I'm going to take a guess. Okay. All right. I want to say this. I'm not entirely sure which one Alabama is. Which state it is? Mm -hmm. It's the one that's like it's got it's got the the, very square. the the square on the I know. on the it sits next to Mississippi. It does, and I I and don't touch tips, and I don't know which one is which. So don't spoil it. Wow, I don't it's don't spoil it. It's the same thing with um Vermont and New Hampshire. Well, I could I would be lost. Those, those two, I get I, because they're like yeah, puzzle they're, pieces. Yeah. Remember, it was one puzzle piece when we were kids. Yeah. That's why not <laughs> nobody knows what those states are. All right, so my guess is is that the state that. Alabama hates the most is Florida. Now, my question is, is it it's the one that borders Georgia, right? Alabama? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I was right. I knew which one it was. It's in between Georgia and Mississippi. I just wasn't 100% sure. There you go. It makes sense now, so, geographically. It's fine. It's I didn't Florida. know I didn't know what Maryland really even was until I moved here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my cousin, I had cousins in New York that used to say, what state is it in? <laughs> All the time. I, mean, I just thought Maryland was like Baltimore. I didn't know it was a whole, like, the redneck part. So California hates Texas. That's because everybody... Move, is moving to Texas. Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Montana, I'll hug California, Colorado, yeah. Utah, Wyoming, and New Mexico. I'm sorry, Arizona, not New Mexico. Hate California. Right. Makes sense. <laughs> That's great. That's Makes funny. perfect sense. That's funny. Okay, uh, back to notes. That was just a little fun divergent, you might say. Um, divergence. Uh, so, yeah, Black Series was a bummer to me. Um, so, I'm going to let Joe take the stand here. <gasps> Hasbro, in addition to revealing their Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Star Wars, they also revealed they can listen to fans. Well, they have to. They, no, they can they listen to money. That's a, the that's a thing. Well, it's, it's the thing about you saying all this shit they're releasing that you don't want, mm -hmm. but people do it's really it's really the people's fault bobby the people. they're, they're making they're making things that people want to spend money on mm -hmm. so people want more fucking luke and grogu and mandalorians so I mean, what happened with D D? The, the open gaming license ogl mm -hmm. right they, they wanted to change it so that they can monetize D D more mm -hmm. and D, D people aren't happy with it right and then so they're like oh, no 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 we, 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 and they reworked it again and everyone's like no fuck you don't change it. You, we know what you're doing. They're trying to act like it's for the greater good or whatever, or for uh, so that people can't make hateful materials and for better for diversity and all this shit and that. But we we know they just want to squeeze more money out of people. Mm -hmm. But everybody <clears throat> fucking can starts canceling D and D like subscriptions. Stop buying shit. They had, took a huge fucking dip. Like immediately the revenue they could see that. And then finally, after, it's only been a few weeks. They're like, we, we, okay, we, we're not going to change it. It's fine. Wow. 
Yeah, so didn't they lay off like fifteen hundred. We're, we're gonna edit this. Okay. Yeah, because they not the Hasbro's not doing doing well, and Watsy uh, Wizards of the Coast, which is with D and D and Magic the Gathering, mm-hmm. feeds a lot of like a third of third the money of it. Has yeah, right, and because I think because of the Hasbro has been squeezing Watsy, and Watsy has been squeezing us in return, but people are finally fighting back. So the Hasbro is just short term goals is, is their problem. They want the immediate money. Now to show, I guess, the investors right. instead of like growing a brand properly and longevity and seeing how she goes down the road. But I'm not sure if they can come back from all of this with magic and with this because you've done so much damage to your reputation. People don't have faith in you anymore, right? And so like it becomes a vicious cycle where you've lost faith, you've lost revenue. People are going to back out of investments, and then you're going to try to squeeze harder, and it's just going to. I don't. I don't know what Hasbro is going to be. In. What do you see Hasbro in five years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Uh, they better, they better double down that like, nerf. I keep telling, yeah, I keep telling <laughs> my uh, fucking. Well, I don't have to because a lot of them listen to me. My card friends mm-hmm. like stop buying, stop buying magic stuff. Mm-hmm. Buy, buy secondhand stuff because it's a big thing anyway. In secondhand market, buy singles instead of buy fresh packs. Mm-hmm. And if you do that long enough, they have to listen because as of last time, people complained um, last year about uh-huh. magic stuff. Uh, they had a fireside chat or some shit like that to where they said no everything's fine we're not doing anything wrong we're gonna keep going in 2023 it's gonna be just like 2022 and everyone's like fuck right so we'll see well good, well, good. They, have a, they have a big release coming up uh, in like this week actually let's, let's see how uh, which, it does which brand magic okay I mean good that they had a fucking impact though the fans yeah so I mean this you can see that fucking money has an impact so stop stop complaining and feeding money to these companies at the same time <clears throat> yeah um so in the Along with Transformers and G.I. Joe and Star Wars and that they can listen to money. They also revealed uh, they have C&Ds. C&Ds. Working overtime, fighting crime, fighting crime. What is that to? So they sent a C&D to a company That's called... That's a cease and desist. Yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, to a company called CFCB Unlimited. Um, I've included their link in the notes. They make uh, a number of things, but what they've kind of made a lot of steam on recently is they've kind of like made um, largely, so to speak, um, upsized mask figures. Okay. Um, that are like I think there's some that are six inches. I think even think there's some that are twelve inches. Are they like Jin Bao? Are they like the reg knockoffs? Yes. Okay. They're done in the kind of like retro style. Like you can buy like. A uh, gentle giant made some Star Wars three and three quarter figures that are like twelve inches tall, and then, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so it's done in that style. It was a, a order, like a made to order type of deal, where mm-hmm. like if you were interested, you hit up the website, told them what you want. It was custom made for you, and then sent to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I want to say they also had some novelty stuff, like one to one knockoffs, pretty much of um, the original mask characters, mm-hmm. but were like keychains. So you could like have them on your set of keys or whatever. And they were kind of all glued together in one piece as opposed to like moving and articulated. Interesting. Um, And Hasbro sent them a... This is, I guess, what they're doing. Yeah, so that's the one one on the right. Is the bigger one. Yes, they're they're making... So, um, like star, like vintage Star Wars style, basically. Oh, so like they're up, upping it to like three and three quarters. Yeah, but okay, the, but okay. there's like they're not adding articulation. It literally right, looks right. like the same. It was upscaled it, scanned and upscaled it. So, um, that was their bag. Yeah, you know, and they were kind of moderately successful. Mask has a passionate but moderate fan base. Yes. Um, and Hasbro sent them a C and D. Now, this is saying to me one of two things, and or it could be saying both. But I'm guessing it's largely one of two things. And one would be more unfortunate than the other. It's either saying, one, that's our property. You can't steal it. It's a one to one copy. Fuck you. And it, because it had like the insignias and everything. So yeah. it's not, you know, it's like perfect. Yeah. yeah. So like you're, you're done. It's not, you're original. done out here. Yeah. It's either saying that, which would be unfortunate because nobody's fucking, there's no viable mask they, merchandise. You can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't exist. Hopefully, it's a sign that they have something coming. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm. Didn't they? I mean, this was years There's ago. There's no other reason, right? Didn't they, not, they launch? Didn't they're not, they? They're not losing other money than, other than greed. They're currently not losing hate, any money. Hate other than hate. Oh yeah, it leads to suffering. So, yeah. didn't Hasbro try to do some like put a bunch of that kind of shit in some unit like raw shares a shared a shared universe. universe and it that's all. This was all pre pandemic. I think it's all gone. Yeah, it all it all fell apart. Um, I think Mask was in a comic book or something. I I don't. I just don't know, man. That 
because the, the, the property is so heavy on the ve- the vehicles made that the figures were afterthought so you know i don't know what if they would try to make that a scale that works with any other lines but i don't think i don't, it's, think, I don't think they think it's, can well no i don't think it's well I'm so, pipe dreaming at this so, point. so i think i'll tell you if, if they made a six inch line of mass figures i'd be first in line okay but there's no ve- vehicles would be like a has lab kind of deal want. okay you know like but like i don't have enough attachment i'm more attached to the vehicles than the characters see i'm more attached to the characters but the vehicles do mean something but mm-hmm. like they're, yeah, they're part i mean they're part but, of the character to me it's uh, a, it's a I, set. I don't disagree yeah but if they were going to do six inch like i got yeah, yeah. i don't want big ass vehicles yeah. and the thing is that they were going to do smaller i don't think i want any upgrades to what i have you know what i right, mean right, like right. It, so they're stuck in a weird spot and they could do three and three quarter yeah, and they could probably get away with that. It's, I mean, it'd be better articulation, better sculpts, anyway. I mean, it is. It's, it's, isn't Ramen Toys doing something? They're doing third party. It's, it's funny that they haven't. Yeah, but they're, they're not. But slept. they. But they. Uh, of course, who knows what's going on over there? But they. Yeah, that's such a good point as well, Christopher. But they avoided any of the kind of insignias, any of the symbols. Mm-hmm. They po- kind of took a third party. Yeah. But know, I mean, it's traditional kind of third party. Paul for the course for Hasbro right now because they did the same thing with Magic and D and D recently. Yeah. Because like Magic, you can get proxy cards which like officially they bots used to be like yeah it's fine proxy you, you don't have to buy real cards as long as it's not get knock off yeah with, you know pr- like real try to be knock off yeah. if you just print your own card and pictures you can use it on your own game right but like they started coming down on companies that were making proxies with people right hmm. And then also with D and D, the whole OGL thing is about taking money from third party. Right. It's about if you, you you used to be able to make shit for D and D for free, but now you have to pay as a royalty, and we can use your shit for free. Sounds like this Transformers third party business has uh, is a is a drop in the bucket compared to some of the other third party. Yeah, but it seems like this like has was coming for Hasbro. everybody that has anything to do with their property. Yeah, because they're trying to squeeze all the monies. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing that's a shareholder thing, and I'm and like and, and like you know, just to show that hey, we're doing something. And it's the same thing, like you know, collecting went up during COVID. It's mm-hmm. you know, like what goes. We'll see up. a lot of people selling a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, let's come basically down. Basically, anything like people just bought anything. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they, they they made it. It was and like they had, money. And they had fucking stimulus check, a stimmy. Yeah. Yep, skinny stimmy. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know. It, it, it's curious. So then, as if that weren't enough. Oh no. They also revealed uh, a n- great number of layoffs. Mm. This so that kind of goes and coincides with the the money talk, right? Yep. So Hasbro's to lay off. This is according to the Hollywood Reporter. Hasbro's to lay off a thousand staffers, fifteen percent of their workforce, amid cost saving push. Um, the toy company and entertainment giant Hasbro says that it will cut its workforce by fifteen percent. The significant layoffs are part of a larger restructuring and cost-saving effort underway with the company having already put its TV and film division entertainment one up for sale. <clears throat> Hasbro CEO Chris Cox said in a statement, we are focusing on implementing transformational changes aimed at, I see what you did. Uh, did there, aimed at substantially reducing costs and increasing our growth rates and profitability. While the full year 2022 in a particular, in particularly the fourth quarter represented challenging my just an ad popped up uh da, 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 represented a challenging moment for hasbro we are confident in our blueprint 2.0 strategy unveiled in october which includes a focus on fewer bigger brands gaming digital and our rapidly growing direct to consumer and licensing business um in selling E1, Hasbro articulated a strategy in which it leans into franchise brands like Transformers, Peppa Pig, and Dungeons and & Dragons, including in entertainment, though it may do so with, without its in-house studio. Hasbro looked at the E1 deal in 2019 to make the toy maker into a media contender as it combined indie studios film with TV unit within its own. But the pandemic disrupted that media strategy with a Hollywood production shutdown and delays in content deliveries as the industry reopened. Hasbro also announced that its president and COO, Eric Nyman, would leave the company with a new organizational model set to be unveiled in the coming weeks. Mm. The elimination of these positions will impact many loyal Hasbro employees, and we do not under- undertake this process lightly. However, the changes are necessary to return our business to a competitive, industry-leading position and to provide the foundation for future success. Yeah, they had a lot, I mean, they had a loss. Hasbro released preliminary earnings report 2022 revenue down 9% for the year and 17% in quarter four. Yep. Only its Wizard of the Coast and Digital Gaming Division there saw their go. finances improve for the year, with the Q4 
uh, you know, quarter four revenues up 22%. And 2022 revenues up 3%. Hasbro's entertainment division saw its revenues decline 12%. Um, the company is taking $300 million in charges related to its entertainment and business plan changes uh, and $21 million in costs associated with the acquisition of E1. It allows Hasbro, having prevailed a boardroom proxy battle against, uh, I guess, Fox and all this other shit, um, Hasbro returned board reiterated that spinning off the gaming division was not required to realizing greater shareholder value at the toy maker, seeing off Alta Fox's proxy battle challenge marked a victory for the newly installed CEO Cox amid the toy makers drive toward becoming a gaming powerhouse. Following the death of CEO Brian Goldner, Cox became the company's talk exec after serving as president and COO of wizards of the coast and digital gaming division. So that's the dude over in charge is the dude from Mm -hmm. wizards of the coast. Hmm. Yeah, which is interesting, also, huh? Well, I have to see how all this uh, this plays out. How it all shakes out, Chris. Hard to say, how really. Much, how much plastic we're addicted to here? We, we, one thing I, we know. I, I, I wanna, we ain't talking about the game. <laughs> we're talking about practice, man. Um, I want to interested to see what the next fucking report is because all this D and D and all this shit that's just happening now. I'm, they took a hit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot and of loss. Watsi, like, Watsi, Watsi was the only thing that was up. Right. That I keep saying, saying they rely on Watsi for fucking money. It was a huge chunk. As much yeah. as everything else went down and Watsi went up, then that's even a bigger chunk. Mm-hmm. And now they're hurting that brand. We'll yeah. see. It's um, not impossible for big companies to go down, man. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, agreed. Like, they can die. So, uh, the last bit of news is a, a gift and a curse, if you will. Um, it's... The DC announcement uh, of James Gunn's lineup. Yeah, I watched that. So, after ambitiously promising fans that they would have something to show by February 1st, Gunn and Safran unveiled the first part of their slate. Um, the duo shared their plans Monday. One of our strategies is to take our diamond characters, which is Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and we use them to prop up other characters that people don't know to build these lesser known properties into the diamond properties of tomorrow, Joseph. Like Guardians. So we're getting, you ready? Here we go. This is like a five-year plan, by the way. Yeah. yeah. We're getting Creature Commandos, seven-episode animated series. Originally a team of classic monsters assembled to fight Nazis. This is a modern take on the concept. The voice actors have yet to be cast, but the executives are looking to find people who can voice the animated characters and also portray the live-action versions. Oh, at the same time. Nice. Um, when the anti-heroes show up in movies and series. So that sounds right up James Gunn's alley. Right. Yes. That sounds like what he would do well. Take a yeah. C team and make it into yeah. something. And it's goofy and all the kind of James Gunn ways. Uh, the next one is Waller. In a spinoff of Gunn's own HBO Max hit series, The Peacemaker, Viola Davis will return as the ruthless and morally ambiguous head of the government task force. It's written by Chris, uh Crystal Henry of The Watchmen and Jeremy Carver, the creator of Doom Patrol TV series. Uh, I'm not sure how interested I am in a whole Waller series. I, I but, think that's going to be great. But it could potentially be great. I just don't know how interested I'm going to find it. Well, I've always enjoyed her. I love her. In the movie. She's in the series. So if she brings that same attitude going forward, I'm I'm down. <laughs> She's perfect. I just don't know. They got to really make that story engaging for me to want to watch something that focuses around her. Right. Um. Next up, Superman Legacy. The movie featuring the Man of Steel that Gunn is writing and made direct, although no commitments on that end have been made. So he's having a blast writing it, by the way. Good. <laughs> While the two previous titles are meant to be uh, aperitifs, I don't, in Safran's words, Superman is the true kickoff for the duo's DCU plans. It's not an origin story. It focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, in the American way. He is kindness in a world that thinks that kindness is old-fashioned. That sounds yes. good. Sounds like mm-hmm. Superman. It sounds like Superman. Um, he also put up a vote on Twitter for trunks or no trunks. Interesting. But also, it says it doesn't matter what you say. Did he say that too? Yeah, <laughs> I think I think trunks is like the trunks, I think is trunks definitely won, the winner. But then after this, like, yeah, I'm not actually going to base my decision on a dumb Twitter poll. <laughs> Like well, afraid. he should have a scene in there where he puts on the trunks, looks in the, looks in the mirror, and says, "No, this isn't going <laughs> to." That makes me think it's going to be no trunks. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, just if it went the other yeah, way, what yeah, about yeah. been like, "I'm listening to the fans." Yeah. What about and hear me out? Yeah. What about camouflage cargo shorts for Superman? <laughs> how about it? And a black t-shirt. Or how about you? <laughs> um, 
Next one, lanterns. Uh, Greg Berlanti's long in the works Green Lantern TV series has been scrapped. In its place will be a new take on the space cost of power rings. Our vision for this is very much in the vein of True Detective. It's terrestrial base. It will feature prominent lanterns heroes Hal Jordan and John Stewart, and is one mm. of the most important shows they have in development. That plays a really big role. So let me take that. Sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, like a, a serious buddy cop Green Lantern story where it's shot in a True Detective style. Um, I could I couldn't think of anything better, Joseph. Even to myself, <laughs> um, this one I found surprising, um, but just not in terms that they haven't done anything with this yet, but just in terms of how they tie it in. The authority. For those that don't know, and nobody does, by the way. Okay, I've never I never heard of this. Group. So it's 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 very renowned in the same way that Watchmen is kind of renowned. Like uh, it's very like uh, Sandman. Like have it's, you heard of this before, Joe? Really? No. Oh, no. it's uh, it's cut of that swath. Okay. It's cut of that swath of like, um, like a Vertigo title. Like yeah, like oh, semi. Was it a Vertigo title? I don't know. I don't know. But it was like okay. semi nineties to two thousands, cutting edge, a little like a, a you know L- a, a little... dark look at an old classic. So it's about mainly. Um, I think there's a Wonder Woman character too, too but there's. I remember them talking about it's a gay Wonder couple Woman. that's a uh uh one Superman and one's Batman. But okay. it's like Apollo and Midnighter. Mm. And it's like a a real world drama take on those two characters in that relationship through the lens of DC. Okay. That's interesting. It is interesting. And it, it is like I've never read it, but it's like it's it's like Sandman for me. Like it's like, <laughs> oh it seems daunting and like, you know, but um like um uh, Course on Nights. Yes, much very similar in most respects, Christopher. Nice, nice. but it is. You haven't ex- watched a TV show because you don't have Netflix. Of what? Sandman. No, no. But, 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 of course but, on Nights is a TV show on Netflix too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, he would never know. It's true. It's extremely well respected. Okay. Um, but it says a movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet that first originated in the late '90s under an influential imprint known as Wildstorm. Yeah. There you go. That's okay. right. I remember. Yeah. yeah so, yep. so it was a Wildstorm book. So it was a, run it, by artist and now head of DC Publishing, Jim Lee. And Alan Moore may have had something to do with it. It's oh, it's funny when you were explaining that, and, and I was trying to figure out a way to say it sounds like it had a lot of image um influence and it is basically yes. an image title well, yeah it's been off of an image title. So said one of the things of the uh the dcu is that it's not just a story of heroes and villains not every film and tv show is going to be about good guys versus bad guys giant things from the sky there are white hats black hats and gray hats oh wait maybe am I, i'm i mean i'm thinking of the authority right i hope i'm thinking of the authority that about what I'm talking about. Can you Google the authority? <laughs> I, am on I am on it. <laughs> um, It'll be hilarious. <laughs> I think I'm getting, actually, ironically, I think I'm getting it confused with this next thing that they announced, which is Paradise Lost, which is another thing that I've never read. But if memory serves me, it's, it was more like a, a slice of lifestyle comic book about like relationships and stuff. Hmm. Um, but well, it, this says, it says, says the Doctor Swift, Apollo, Jenny Sparks, Midnighter. There you go. The yeah. Engineer, Jack Hawksmore, right, cool. and the Infant Jenny Quantum. I'm right. Yep. Right. Uh, that's who's in the space. <laughs> that's the important part. It's like, whoo! Because that was a lot of talking. I'm yeah, not going to cut it out. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Paradise Lost. Um, and maybe Alan Moore has something to do with Paradise Lost. It's, I think that is right. The duo describes this HBO Max series as a Game of Thrones style drama set on the all female island that is Wonder Woman's birthplace. Oh, okay. So it's going to be about the Themyscarians, not about the comic that was called Paradise Lost. Fine. Um, Filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players. So, like, this sounds great to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, but, like, we're, we'll get there. Next is The Brave and the Bold. This is the introduction of the DCU Batman um, of Bruce Wayne and also introduces our favorite Robin, Damian Wayne, who is a little son of a bitch. That's a quote. <laughs> the movie, uh, who, and I also agree. It's a very strange father and son story. And importantly, will, will it will feature a Batman not played by Pattinson. So, I like that. Okay. I like that it's not Pattinson, and uh, that's that's my like from that takeaway. I'm not so sure if I want to if I want a Batman with Damien necessarily, but because I've I've never I've never feel like I've gotten the Batman with fucking uh, Drake or fucking Grayson, you know, which is the ones I would prefer. Uh, anyway, uh, then there's also the Batman sequel. Uh, which is Pattinson will continue to portray the Dark Knight in at least one more crime saga movie directed by Matt Reeves. That movie, with uh, the executives revealed, will be released October third, twenty twenty five, and very, it's being very clever name for that movie. And it's being titled. The, you ready for this? Mm. The Batman Part Two. 
Perfect. Which reminds me of uh, True Romance when uh, they're like, this is a, uh, you like these? Yeah, yeah, what is this? They're the dailies. Is that what you call them? Yeah. It's the sequel, the body bags. No shit. Yeah, we don't have a name for it yet, but what is what is Joe like? Uh, body bags two. <laughs> oh, well, that's imaginative. I have more taste in my penis. <laughs> um, 2025 is going to be a very big year for DC. Superman and Batman within the same year. Okay, then Booster Gold, an HBO Max series based on a unique, lesser-known hero created in 1986. Safran said of the series, it's about a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to the day to pretend to be a superhero. Imposter syndrome as a superhero. Sounds good, yeah. and I think Sounds Gunn is the right person for it. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Taking its cues from the recent Tom King written miniseries, this movie promises a different take than what most think of when Superman's cousin comes to mind. Have you read that story? I have not. I have heard. Her, her, it looks great, though. Picture herself. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. She's like sitting down on the ground, mm. like the shit all behind her. Yeah. Um, we will see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, raised on a rock, a chip off a of Krypton, and who watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways over the first 14 years of her life and then come to Earth. She is much more hardcore and not the Supergirl we're used to. Mm. Nice. I'm okay I with like, that. Yeah, I like the difference. So she's not going to be a, <clears throat> a bubbly high school student? It kind of reminds me of what Batman was afraid of when Supergirl showed up in. Uh, uh, the Superman Batman books um, where like uh, like he said to Superman at one point because he didn't trust Supergirl at all and Crypto was like snarling at her and uh, he said like he turned to Superman he was like even the dog doesn't like her <laughs> and, and then he was like he's like Bruce the, the dog doesn't like anybody <laughs> <laughs> um Next, Swamp Thing, a horror film that promises to close out the first part of the first chapter. Uh, To come up with an overall direction, the Slate Gun assembled a group of writers, directors, uh, from people involved with The Martian, The Flash, Moon Knight, Watchmen, etc. Before audiences get to those films and series, however, there's a matter of this year's crop of movies, which includes Shazam! Fury of the Gods, coming March 17th, The Continuing with The Flash, set for June 16th, Blue Beetle for August 18th, and Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, set for December 25th. The only thing I didn't see mentioned in here um, was the Joker. I got you. Okay, guys. So, I I watched... I watched about a 10 minute video as James Gunn and it sounds like he was reading whatever copy that was for a lot of it. Uh, but, um, he said anything that does not take place in the core continuity will now be like considered an else world story. Okay. So the Matt, Matt Reeves, Matt, they said, and he was like, I want to clearly label this. So everybody knows like that, the, the, the Batman, the Batman, the, that story is an else world story. It's not happening. The Joker, um, mm-hmm. Well, that particular is happening in in an else world story, <clears throat> and then they, the most interesting thing he said was he's talking about the Flash movie is that it is going to reset the entire universe. Perfect, that's Perfect. what we've Flash been talking more. about yep. for yeah. what yep. four fucking years. Flash yep. more, bro. So finally, that movie is going to come out. And but it's nice to have a unifying vision in the past, it is. Yep. right? To yep. like really and clarity, yeah. clarity, and I think that's super important. Clarity it was so thing. muddy before it was. This is in this universe. This is I mean, not. And he men- is- he mentioned that you know there's been such a disconnect between the animated story. Stories, yeah. and the TV shows on the CW and the, the yeah. movies and now it's all going to be yeah. uh, all one cohesive story because they have canceled Doom Patrol now and okay I mean like, they're moving like they're, away they're from they're getting everything, everything lined and, up for I mean it's good and Doom Patrol we've, we've seems been saying like, for a few years like just fucking start over yeah, yeah, Doom start Patrol over. seems like the one weird ass thing that could probably hang on because it's so <laughs> yeah, it like unrelated in, and, and it seems in his wheelhouse yeah um but yeah, I, like so, <clears throat> I've been saying this. Uh, a lot of people, as you might imagine, have been hitting me up about it. Um, it sounds great. It sounds great. Yep. But I treat DC very similarly to the way I treat Star Wars, which is very similarly to the way I treat pre-orders. <laughs> I trust my tracking notice. Mm. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. That's the, re- the reveals look great. When I get my shipping notice, I'll start to really get excited. It makes sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Let's see. It's all come to fruition. I mean, you think about all. You mentioned Star Wars. You think about over the past three years, all the things that have been announced that have just vanished, mm-hmm. you know, for different reasons. But it'd be interesting to see long term. Yeah. Yeah. In five years, we'll see where DC and Hasbro are. Yeah. 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 Maybe they'll, maybe, uh, speak, Some, speaking of, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I was saying, somebody remind us. Yeah. <laughs> Today is, we'll put on a calendar. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that uh, teaser from McFarland for they're doing uh, the Dark Knight trilogy? Toys, mm-hmm. 
Uh, I saw the Batman. Yeah, like, that, that's all they yeah, put. Okay, out okay, that okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, oh my, God, why do they still use those awful pins in their shoulders? Yeah. And it's just the technology is. Yeah, it's they look they look good if you can get them in a good pose. But mm-hmm. past that, it's because it's McFarland plastic capes. Yeah, it's like he's he's just started using articulation, so he's like so <laughs> far behind. Like, and that Superman I have up there, <laughs> just started using articulation. You know what I mean? That Superman I have up there that's on the flight stand. Yeah, that's a McFarland. Is it really? Yeah, and it looks great. Yeah. But, like, you have to kind of pose it the way you want it and be done with it. Yeah. You know? Um, anyway. Uh, there's better ways to make knees, Todd. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for notes. And then we have a bit of questions. Um, so, first one is from Seth Builds. What's poppin' spell table? Hope you motherfuckers are doing well. So with Wizards and Hasbro putting D&D Beyond and all things D&D behind a paywall, things have been picking up hardcore in the Pathfinder community. Yes, they eight, has. eight months' worth of core books were sold in two weeks. Pathfinder has a similar setup to 5, 5 E or 5th fifth fifth edition, edition mm-hmm. of D&D for the non-mouth breathers. I have enjoyed Pathfinder over the years and hope that P- Paizo... We'll yeah. we'll learn from the mistakes of wizards. Also, Chris, hope your grind on Elden Ring goes better this go round. It did not. <laughs> I love these difficult ass games because I hate myself and I might be sadomasochistic. Uh, hmm. uh, we'll <laughs> find that shit out in therapy. As for my question this week, what are you looking forward to in the next couple of nerd quarters? Much love. Um. So for me, I'm looking forward to honestly being done with my back catalog of collecting Hmm. all the things that have come out over time that I have wanted. I'm like, I'm, I'm well within reach of, um, and I, I'm planning to have done by April or may, but, uh, it may be, it may, it may not be that, that soon, but I'm trying. I just, for instance, I bought, uh, just this morning, I bit the bullet and bought my, uh, Gorgo, not to be confused with Grogu, uh, one sixth figure for my three hundred shelf. One sixth, um, one sixth. Wow. Um, yeah. And uh, and then I, I'm gonna move that three hundred shelf down to the bottom, and then put little Leonidas with uh, Grogu or Gorgo. <laughs> God, you fucked, fucked yourself. Up. Yeah. yeah. With we Gorgo can, behind we can make him. that happen. Robert can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. And um and then that's another shelf done. You know. And I just I finished my horror shelf just this week, and like it's just like I'm. Like I'm, I'm well within within reach, and it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. So um, I'm looking forward to a lot of my back catalog stuff. And the other thing I'm looking forward to is a lot of this like more obscure ex trans bots and make toys releases of like oh, the head make toys. Yeah, I watched the make toys video. Headmasters and fucking. Um, I wonder if they're going to actually release uh, all that shit. Run about, run amok, all that kind of stuff. Like I'm just excited to get some of these things that I thought I was, I you know, I'd kind of written off. So I guess that's probably and then anything Iron Studios that I have pre ordered, I'm excited about. As long as I don't get my pre order canceled and then they fuck off with it, <laughs> that'd be great. You guys? I don't want to be a bummer, but I'm not really. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to anything right now. Are you? you did you? You? Because you already and you already got the Angelus. Yeah, yeah. It's just so like, not really interested. Do you have any pre-orders that are sp- supposed to come up in the next couple of months? Probably, maybe. I haven't kept track. Oh, I have um, the Claymore diorama, clear anime. Diorama, okay, and I have uh, Vampire Hunter D on a horse statue pre-order for Ooh. Krista. I think it's like three thousand mm. dollars. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, That's a lot of D. It's, it's not for me though. So. <laughs> There's a lot of horse. It's a little smaller D. It's only one like six. Yeah, horse D. Uh, um, Christopher, I don't really. I, I be. I went through and deleted, canceled eight NRDs on a ton of shit. Hmm. That just. I don't know. I just like superhero stuff. Like, like I don't need another Batman. I don't yep. need another. Like, I've got, I've got a nice superhero collection with the Mezco stuff, and it's like I don't need the new version of this or this obscure character that I don't even know anything about. Yeah. So I just, I went through and deleted. I'm trying to think if there's anything like, I can't think of anything that I'm super excited about, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, collectible wise, you know, I don't even know if there's any movies or any, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of, kind of in a collecting funk a little bit, I'd mm. say. It's, I, it's ironic. Cause I feel like I have been for some time and I'm just coming out of yeah. it. Um, you know, which is nice, but you know, who knows? I mean, I'm sure I'll find my way back soon enough. But 
I think it's just because I'm like I'm like finally starting to see some shelves close up that like I've just been like, what am I gonna do here? What am I gonna do here? And starting to figure some of it out. It's like half the fun for me. I think is like the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. that makes um, sense. All right, and then we have one from Johnny D. He says, "Sup, Ragers? Really been enjoying Bobby's energy since the changeover. You can feel his enthusiasm returning. It's absolutely palatable, and I'm here for it. I think it has. Like, uh, I'm ex- I'm happy to do shit again. Um, it's it's like it feels balanced to me. Uh, oh, it's, it's nice to see somebody so happy after a transition. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What, You're right. What changeover? Oh, did I miss something? Uh, like moving shit over to Patreon. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yes. So obviously, so. yeah. So obviously, this was a big week for WWE with one of the best rumbles in recent history. It was great, at least as far I as he's concerned. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't talk about I that. I totally shit. forgot about. It. As a mild humble brag, he's had a few creations on the screen that night himself. Yeah, I'm a pro wrestler gear designer for the New Day, Johnny Gargano, yep. Ricochet, Candice LeRae, and a few others. Wow. So nice. It was, so it was I a, might follow you on Instagram. I don't know. I'll follow a lot of those kind of guys on Instagram. Uh, well, it's uh, Davin Poe, at Davin Poe. I don't think I do, but I will now. Um, and he says, uh, so it was a fun night for me on a couple levels. But on to the big question. I need to hear y'all's thoughts on the bloodline. The chair and that whole final segment. To me, it was the wrestling story, wrestling storytelling at its most satisfying. All right. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, okay. I'm I'm not much of an expert on it, but from what I've heard about it, it sounded great. All right. So, <laughs> really heartfelt stuff there. It was, it was, yeah. It was. I, I would even go. Um, Let, so, show me that Instagram handle that he posted there, because I'm trying to find him. I would even go so far as to say. Um, Describe it perhaps as being um, okay, satisfying. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's sweet a little bit. Yeah. A, a, a lot of storytelling. Yep. You know, and a lot of satisfaction. Yes. It's a little bit of satisfying storytelling. Yes. You know, a and little, that, nice little bow tie to One the more end. time. I'm not finding it. Just so hold without, it up for me. So I'm, so, so let me, let me help these, these, uh, so uh, with, without seeing it though, that's what I'm hearing. That's yes. the scuttlebutt. Uh, okay. Got it. So what I'm going to say is that these jabronis <laughs> are just offensive at this point. So, um, hang on, I think I found you, dude. Come on, I don't know. Nobody's fine. No, there's no. Anyways, Devin, <clears throat> find me. Send me your your shit. Um, so here's the, here's the bloodline storyline. Roman Reigns, uh, who is the the current? Let me see if I get this right. WWE Universal heavyweight champion he actually has two belts he has the smackdown belt and the raw belt roman reigns was kind of this there shove this dude down your throat for years he was getting he was getting booed even you know this was like vince mcmahon's baby forever um when the pandemic first hit oh he took some time off he has leukemia that had resurfaced he took some time off somehow was able to uh be in a fast and furious movie he was in the Hot Shaw, Hobbs and Shaw. He is the Rock's cousin, tells, legitimately. Tells you it doesn't take too much to be in those fucking things. Well, he is the Rock's cousin, legitimately. <laughs> Anyways, so when he comes back, he's 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 a bad guy now, right? His first time he's ever been a, a heel, a I heel, believe, is what heel, they call it, Christopher. Yeah, trying, to, trying to speak to the plebes here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's it's pretty well known that... How, how does he do a key fob? A key fob? What do you mean? Keeping his key fob. He, oh, he doesn't drive pocket. himself. He has protected him. <laughs> <laughs> His cousins, the Uso brothers, or they go by the Usos, they are brothers. They're Rikishi's son, which makes them his cousins. And they all grew up together, about the same age. Okay. And in it all, they're, the long story here is those guys, and then the Usos have one other brother they brought in. And then Paul Heyman, who was with Brock Lesnar for years and years. Paul Heyman. Brock, Brock, uh, Paul Heyman is the guy who started ECW years ago. And now he works for WWE and has for years. But as an on-screen role, he's this great sniveling mm. like guy, and, and the role he plays now is he's the what does he call himself? The wise man to the tribal chief who is Roman Reigns, and he Roman Reigns will come out in this. Uh, he's got a lay on, you okay. know, the, the Samoan lay, um, and Paul Heyman is just very respectful and all this. Well, Sami Zayn, 
It's this redheaded goofball guy. Mm-hmm. For example, last WrestleMania, he wrestled Johnny Knoxville in a jackass match. Okay. He starts kind of hanging around these guys. Oh, with the clowns from out of town, Jim. And long story short, they take him in as one of their own. They actually name him Sammy Uso. Mm. And he does some... And there's always this tension between him and Roman Reigns. It's, it, this has been one of the best rest, pro wrestling storylines forever. Well, Sami Zayn's best friend in real life and for years on TV is a guy named Kevin Owens. And he was a bad guy, too, for a long time. Well, there's been a lot of, as you know, a lot of turmoil. In oh, WWE. my God. It, long story <laughs> short, they brought Kevin Owens in to have a program with, with Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Well... It, it pinnacles at the Royal Rumble. The match was great. Unrelated to the match, they had a title match between Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. And this was Sami Zayn, you have to prove yourself. And long story short, Roman Reigns wins. He goes to hit Kevin Owens with a chair while he's handcuffed. And then he just hands the chair to Sami and says, you do it. And Sami hits Roman with the chair. Mm. and the crowd just goes bananas goes bananas and it is it has been one of the best wrestling storylines i think the bloodline storyline is it might be my favorite wrestling program ever wow it is it's been fucking phenomenal and it's been good. like it like on a uh, monday on raw they had the 30th anniversary and there was all these rep- like uh, the 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 tag team uh, the usos who are double tag team champions also they were wrestling and one of them gets hurt. Well, Sammy ends up getting in the match and filling in. And the, the tension they've built with this is incredible. Hmm. I, I give them five and seven, eight stars on, on this program. So um, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I Bobby did it. said describing this was wrong at all. <coughs> yeah. Hopefully yeah, we, I, we, I did this justice. Wrong, right? Ahead of the curve, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I did that justice. I'm sure anybody who, who listens is either bored out of their mind or like, you missed all this stuff, but in a consolidated form. There you go. Well, he also said he'd love to hear some fantasy booking about how the story resolves. How do you want to see it all go down? So I, want, I personally want to see it in a in battle between Doink the Clown <laughs> And the rock. Okay. And the doink stands victorious and becomes the doink. So he's the leader of the, the head of the table now. Mm-hmm. And it's not doink. like just like if he was doink, but when he beat the rock, he becomes the doink. The doink. Yeah. Um, un- with makeup, you can be, have a new guy. Unfor- <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So there was, there was long standing rumor in Scuttlebutt that, that, uh, Rock the Dwayne Johnson was going to be at, at WrestleMania to fight Roman Reigns, which he should have been at Royal Rumble to set that up, and he wasn't, so the likelihood of that is now. The way to end the... So you got to get the belts off everybody, which means Yo, uh. the the titles. <laughs> yeah, fantasy booking that. I think, um, I think it, Paul Heyman should turn on Roman Reigns at some point in time. The Usos are going to lose their belts to uh, people on the different shows, and um, I don't. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say where something like that goes. Other than, I think at some point, once you have something else strong enough to carry the show, that you just take them off TV for a while because they've been such a mainstay since. I mean, this started back like when they were wrestling in front of no one, and when they were wrestling, you know, I, I, you guys probably saw it at some point. WWE had this thing called a Thunderdome. It was. The, the TV screens. All oh yeah, the way during around. COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, this yeah. is this has started during COVID and is built and built and built and it's just uh, I don't know. Be interesting to see how they ended. I don't really have a good fantasy right. book on the cuff for that. Well, we have one last question um, from Matt H. He says, "Hey gang, hope all is good with you, cool cats and jazz babies." I thought the last round of questions went good, so here are some more. I must say, I am disappointed with my uncut brother. The McRib? Come on, Joe. You're better than that. <laughs> All right. True or, true or false? Oh, no, true or false. That's right. Uh, circus peanuts are the drizzling shits. True. F- uh, that's false, and fuck you, Matt. You know why. <laughs> I I don't know if I've ever had them. They're the orange They're like marshmallow. They're awful. It, you got to get fresh ones, and I've always said this. <laughs> if you squeeze them in their hard, pass. Okay. And they also they also basically taste like the marshmallows that you get in uh, Lucky Charms. Uh, yogurt is the consistency between jello and pudding. False. 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 
Yogurt no, can be so many different things. But yeah, it's not solid at all. Gel has to have some kind of bite to it. Yeah. Um, Unless you're eating some kind of weird fucking yogurt, bro. Fruit flavored ice cream is for dickheads. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's, true. <laughs> it's sorbet. It's sorbet, yeah. <laughs> um, Chick fil A is seasoning is seasoned for white people. False. True. He, that's, did, that's he, put, false. he put underneath there Popeye's gang gang. Yeah. Um, KFC, bro. Yeah. It's oh fuck. It's cons- cons- Chick Fil A is consistent, space, motherfucker. Chick Fil A is consistent. Um, always taste your food before salting it. True. 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 I didn't used to when I was in the high school. I just automatically put salt and pepper on every fucking thing. Um, saying A C A B is peak bozo behavior. <laughs> what <laughs> is this uh, articulated comment? No, that's A C A cab. What is A? C- I just A cab A C A B. What is ACAB? Google it. I just ACAB. I feel like I just came across this acronym recently. Oh, okay. Oh yes, all cops are bastards. That's where I did come across it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's look, all anything equals anything is, that a nice, is, is bullshit. Is that an Ice yeah. T song? No. You know, like th- that's the problem with all of it. Yep. <laughs> Which I feel like I just did. <laughs> um, but that's the problem is is over generalizing any group any of people thing. based on anything is usually a setup for error. Yeah. Um okay. So uh crossovers of any sport are never good. What does that even cross- mean? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm just going to say wait, Michael Jordan played baseball and basketball. Hey, true. Maybe that's it. Okay, there we go. Um in 5 years comic book movies will not be a thing. False. Wait, False based wait. on what we just heard. Triathlons are like fucking cross of multiple sports and that's fine, right? Decathlon. Got to learn how to swim and I'm good. CrossFit and Yeah. A man must have principles. True. True. Only in high school. <laughs> <laughs> um Bartlett pear trees smell like first baby. So true. true. I have no idea. I Laura I says yes. If you're outside in the springtime and you get a whiff of nut. They call them Laura, Laura and my buddy Charlie call them cum trees. Oh I yeah, one, it I smells had, like chloride. It smells like jizz. Yeah, yeah, I had one in my yard. And I, I thought this tree just smelled like that when the fucking trees are in. shit. By the way, they're not strong at all. They fall over. Oh really? Yeah, they need some Viagra. <laughs> Esteban must be protected at all costs. True. 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 Uh, inbox collectors do not know how to party. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. If you are strictly an inbox collector, if yeah, you, you, then true, <clears throat> true. Uh, depends on which boxes, so to speak. Marvel Legends. Only well, some boxes look great. What, <laughs> what, about, what about if the they're new... all the same size and same format? Like like um, I don't know, figure people. arts or like JoJo figures. There's some figures that some boxes look great as as just like a set of boxes. Miggs Mayfield is the best character from The Mandalorian. I don't know who that is. False. Uh, Bill Burr. I'm trying He's to He's pretty think. fucking great. I don't yeah, know if it's I'm, a great this. I might say true. Uh, I'll say Carl Weathers is. Carlo Esposito is the only one that I would... I'm, I'm up for debate on, because, but I need to know more information. I would say standing right now, Bill Burr is probably, I think, the most interesting character on yeah. there. When they got into his backstory about when he used to be with the Empire and everything yep. else, like it's, he's probably the... I enjoyed that episode. I thought it was yeah, so gross when they put those dudes' clothes on. It's like, why are these guys dudes <clears throat> wet? And I really thought that, um, you know, the girl that they canceled, yeah, had her character had potential of like being a New Republic uh, you know, f- soldier, mm-hmm. and then kind of quitting that also because yeah. it's just b- for the bureaucracy again. Like yeah. there was a lot of potential there, but it was taken Can't from it. us. Uh, n- nothing soothes the soul more than a n- noose bowl of s- nice. It was a misspelling. Nice bowl of stew on a winter's day. Uh, I'd say definitely true on that. That's one. a hard false for me. False. I don't eat stew. I don't live in the medieval times. Oh my god! I fucking. I give me a waffle house, bro. I'm not really interested in any food. <laughs> As a main course meal, with it, that I had to eat with a spoon. Really, that's tragic. a new thing. That's yeah, tragic for sure. I like soups and stews and mm-hmm. yeah. See, I like a soup, but I like to dip some other shit in it or have it as a side or whatever. But like my main course Clam chowder. So last night, a bunch of buddies of mine got together and had a, a dinner, right? Mm-hmm. And. We had grilled cheese. Fuck oh, yeah. nice. We all went We all went to the fucking grocery store. We all bought... We were like, let's do fucking nice grilled cheeses. We got bacon. We got um, nice Mun- bread. Did you get some Munster cheese? So, yeah. We got... A, let me tell you something. We we got a fucking smorgasbord of different cheeses. We spent a fucking hundred dollars on this dinner. Oh, no doubt. And uh, came back... Um, 
cut them, like, you know, fixed them all up, grilled them all up, you know, so to speak, on the griddle. It, it cut them all up and, like, mixed them all up and it was just, like, and cut them up into fours. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you could just partake in, like, different squares and whatever. And, like, it was a fucking amazing dinner, for one, and some of the best grilled cheese I've ever had in my life. I'm not sure how I got here. Was there tomato soup yeah. involved? Soup. There was tomato soup involved. And a buddy of mine, figured. Gonzo, mm-hmm. Home, made it from scratch. Oh, wow. And it was fucking delicious. I love I, that. That is like a combo that I'm always down for. Yeah. Tomato yeah, soup so and some It's a white trash pizza. <laughs> with some, <laughs> with some uh, <laughs> yes. With some plain potato chips. Mm-hmm. And that's not white trash. It's putting fucking craft and ketchup on a piece of bread and put it in the fucking convention oven. That's true. Because I've done that shit. I mean, I've had uh, just, just, you know, ketchup and bread. Yep. Yeah. I've done that too. Mayonnaise and bread is the next step up. So yeah, but mayonnaise, cheese, and bread was yeah, like, oh, oh wow. now yes. we're talking. <laughs> we, we, we grew up in the same area. <laughs> <It's> legendary. <laughs> status. Bobby and I, we grew up in the same area. We just didn't know each other. Yeah, it's true. Uh, edibles are the ideal way to experience that sweet, sweet chiba. So I've never had an edible uh, experience of marijuana. Uh, I have. I, I quite enjoy it actually. Yeah, I've never. I've never. It wasn't really a. Th- I mean, people did brownies in my day, but like it was like, man, I'm not gonna fucking sit here and bake a brownie, you bozo. Roll this shit up. I, mean, I, mean, I, made, I made my own fucking butter and then cooked with it. Yeah, I wasn't that uh, much into the culinary arts when I was <laughs> smoking. Um, you know, well, it was just, it wasn't available to buy when I was doing it, so I had to make it myself. I mean, it's just bu- like well, yeah. box brownie mix, but then you you make the weed butter. You have to cook the weed. Get the oil out, mix it with That's butter. too much work. Yeah, if I was just roll, roll, roll and go. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a whole different experience. Yeah, no, I've heard and that. And some people just can't smoke but, or don't want to smoke. But it was a, uh, it was more of a novelty thing. Like now yes, I feel like it's yes, very, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a, it was definitely a very different experience. Also, a lot less control. There's a, there's a problem. Loving totally bald genitals says a lot about a person. <laughs> I mean, I love totally bald genitals. I do too. What does that say about I don't me? know if I have a strong opinion either way, but okay, true. <laughs> I don't know if it says a lot, um, but maybe it does. Local store restaurants are always superior to chain stores. No, nah, I can't say that because 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 that not all. It's that always. It's, it's that always. Yeah. Anytime you start throwing always and often, never often, often would be a nice word to put in there. Often, if it's often I'm in. Often I agree. Um, cup is the best transformer. True. False. False. Uh, you have one friend here, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Living and dying at the feet of a political party is for the mentally ridiculous. True. True. He says, that's all I got. Thanks for keeping it real. I like it. Field. It was good. Yeah, it was good. So, um, who was the best transformer? For me? Or objectively? I mean, cup for him. So No, it's not the best. Uh, uh, I might disagree with, it's actually Wheelie, so. <laughs> what was, what was the No, it, it was, I, he said it was, he is oh, okay. the best. I, I do love me some cup. Um, on a cup two girls I mean Dead End is my favorite what, which specific cup from the because there's a lot of Transformers I like, I like the 86 movie cup 86 movie cup and I know they did some great stuff with him in IDW but that's that's not how I know him I mean, I, I have the records books and stuff but you know I know him from uh, Turbo Revin Young Punk I'll yeah. straighten you out yet because I thought it, it it reminded me of my dad and it just reminds me of myself yeah. it's strange how that turns out Dead End was my favorite Transformer character, and then Grimlock, Petro Rabbits. I like Grimlock a lot too. I like, Which I like that the cartoon Grimlock. Yeah, I like that he like didn't like uh, give a fuck. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah, kind of like he was like he just didn't get in line. Right. You know that was the thing about so many of the Transformers on both sides; they just fell in line or were treacherous. Because I wasn't, uh, 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 I wasn't a fan of that either. I just like somebody that was willing to think a little differently on either team, and I think that's why I gravitated to both. Yeah, I think I like Jetfire or oh, Skyfire. Yeah, I mean he's. A, I think it's he's, for the same reason. Yeah, and he's fascinating. It, yeah. You know, there's there's you know there's not that many characters in Transformers that are that complicated. It's a brand new masterpiece figure out. Jetfire, Skyfire does. That's true. That's true. It is true. It's gonna. I can tell you this. It's gonna smash in the fucking articulation category because that fans' toys articulation ain't worth a fuck, right? Everybody, but that has that extra special finish that they release later on, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's beautiful looking. <laughs> Every time I I hear about, I think of New York Mike because he was like he missed out on that. It's like if you ever see anybody who has one, I always um, think about him when that repaint yep. gets mentioned. I'll never forget, like, um, but that, that guy toys, though. We made it, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? that? That's like, there's some history right there in mecha form. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Um, that thing. But I made a joke about, uh, 
about the fans toys articulation on dummies i was like you know i was like everybody oh i, I heard that you said recently it, it yeah. has them only in one of two poses mine for instance yes. is holding the gun uh, standing up across yeah. his his abdomen area with supporting it with the other hand and then the other way you can do it is just a straight a pose yep like just standing i, th- I think heroically I think I have his like gun up or something. Like yeah, yeah, you could do something like that. That's it. That's your only options. And somebody, I mean, and, and I don't mean any disrespect. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I can't even remember who it was, but somebody was like, "Nah, bro," and sent like a ton of pictures of him in poses. And let me tell you something: <laughs> every single one of these poses looked like some bullshit. <laughs> it it looked like um like like now do a silly one. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like his design is just not like. The most conducive to action, but he's a big, chunky, blocky motherfucker. I know? agree, but Takara did figure out a way. Yeah, like he, they, you know, they they got him yeah. sorted, you know, articulation wise. Yeah. Um. So we're finishing up mad early today. Uh, Are we? Just yeah. remember the three and a half hour episodes against yeah. this one, and it'll all work out. And what I'm probably gonna do is I still have that great wall conversation that we had oh, that shit. I, I just haven't had time wow. to post on patreon i forgot about that that movie so i'll just tack it on to the end to this Boom. um bonus yeah it's a for, for those that don't know it was a running joke here about uh asian representation in film and it spawned washing yeah white, whitewashing white hero it, it, or whatever. Yeah, white hero white, savior, white, yeah. white savior and it, it, we we got into the last samurai we got into um this movie the great wall with matt damon where he saves all the chinamen um <laughs> <laughs> we got into you, you know of course uh scarlett johansson as a as playing the major and all of those things are kind of wrapped in up show. in this conversation it's been an ongoing long going part of this thing um you know for years and years and years it's been like an ongoing joke and paul c listener slash friend slash longtime supporter yes fellow uh, yellow <laughs> my fellow yellow that's joe's words not mine bought that movie on dvd not even blu-ray and sent it to us. That motherfucker also sent us Ghost in a Shell with Charles Johansson. Correct. And that one was on Blu-ray. Um, so sent it to us. Uh, and then Joe and I watched it and then had a conversation about it. Uh, you know, and we both kind of felt the same way. So it's not the most compelling conversation in the world because there was like no real disagreements. But, but it's just that we did it. But we did it. And if you want to hear us kind of the closure to that chapter in many ways, it'll be on the end here. So with that being said, shout out to the rest of the cool table as far as I'm concerned. If you listen to this podcast, you're part of it. And shout out to the rest of the Nerd Rage team. Shout out to Raul on Instagram. Shout out to Dante on Facebook. Shout out to Phil on our notes and on Twitter. Shout out to Ricky Ticky Timber on the videos. And I think that's it. Shout out to anybody else that I forgot just in case. And with that, Flappy Labius. Tasty Taint. Tight Dick Player. So, in the history of uh, Nerd Rage and tradition of Nerd Rage, uh, Paul C. got us something that uh, is in line with Asian cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he gifted us uh, Great Wall on DVD. I'm not even sure if this is cultural appropriation or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a cultural exploitation. <laughs> something is like a, that. Is a better word for it. Um, starring Matt Damon. And uh, Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian. Which I like uh, I like him. The more I see him, the more I like him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm going to... Uh, so, he, the plot of this movie... Are you going to put up the tagline? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the plot of this movie is these two Europeans. One is a Spaniard, and one is sort of nondescript. He's fought for the English. He's fought for the French. European. He's fought for Generic the Spain. Um, I think he's English, because his act... Oh, something he, like that. Yeah, it sounds American, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, they are in search of a rumored black powder, which I'm guessing is gunpowder. Powder, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they are in search of black powder... Uh, they're kind of on. We, we do, it opens with them being on the run from Mongolians. We assume. I think so. And then they are captured by the army that occupies the Great Wall, which mm-hmm. is sort of a military force that defends the Emperor of China. Um, but it is seems like its own sect, like the, the yeah. Nameless Order is what yeah. it's called. Uh, yeah, and I think they're supposed to be defending basically the whole country. So while they are trying to get the black powder, um. They come to find out that there's this alien race that has landed on Earth in a meteor, 
and it's basically the Tyranids yes, from 40K. It is definitely, dude. I I want a fucking 40K movie. <laughs> I do too. Actually, after seeing that, like, uh, this works. There's a queen. There's a a like a bodyguard unit that surrounds the queen yep. alien, and then they control. She controls with a hive mind these like abundance of and, troops, and they eat and they use what they eat to reproduce more, which is exactly what the Tyranids yeah. do. So, and then. Uh, Matt Damon's character arc is he basically stops worrying about the black powder and uh, helps save well, China. Well, the, the poon helps, I think. I think the, the lady, the lady general. Yes. He, he, she, he's fond of. I yes. think, I think, I mean, it, I'd, hard to say, but it could have been gone differently if it was just another dude. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I think that that's, I think that that's fair. It is a five out uh five point nine out of ten IMDB rating. Um which is what what is it translated into into letter grade? Uh D. Uh, an F plus or a D minus. This five point nine is like almost a sixty percent. Um so yeah. Um I mean I would uh, grade wise, I would I f- I I would say a D, but I want to give it a C just because of the some of the stuff I like in it. Yeah, but it's a D overall. I do I do like the alien stuff. Yes, I like the alien stuff. I like the, some of the actors. I like I don't know. I actually like a lot of like the gimmicks of the wall. Like I, yes, I think it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Some of it doesn't make any real sense because like like it's really, it's just being real extra. But. Yeah, yeah, it's like super redundant. Like they they use. Uh, like they have like this like parts of the wall open up and these giant like scissors come out of the wall and like slice and dice. But they don't use them all the time. They don't use them all the time and they just, like send people like to like yeah. run down and try to chop them up or or stab them in the eyes. Instead of dropping stuff over Instead the wall, of dropping they, stuff they have people or using on the scissors to repel down and <laughs> it doesn't stab make people? any sense. Um there is some uh some trivia stuff. Uh let's see. This was um this was the most uh how would you rate the Great Wall. Uh, I'll give it a six also. Um, oh, man. I don't want to. All right. So, this was the most expensive Chinese film ever with a budget of. At the time, at least, anyway. Yes. With a budget of $135 million and due to the huge amount of crew involved, had over 100 translators. For his role as an archer, Matt Damon was trained in Hungary uh, by a world champion archer. Nice. The filmmakers were denied permission to film on the actual Great Wall, so the locations were added digitally. The colored mountains in the film are real. Mm-hmm. They can they can be seen in uh, a place in the northwest region of China. The beasts in this film are called Tao Tai, named after an evil fiend in Chinese mythology. Here they are represented as alien beings. The poster says Great Wall took 1,700 years to build. This is technically accurate since it was actually constructed as a series of several walls built separately over that time by various ruling dynasties each new wall section built a single ruler would take approximately 10 to 20 years matt damon and his family spent nearly a year and a half in china during filming a majority of the film was filmed in china with some scenes shot in new zealand Uh, james horner was contracted to write a score to the movie before his death uh, while a guest on uh, WTF podcast, Matt Damon knew the movie was going to be a dud when he had about four months left shooting. Damon witnessed the director cave to the film's backers over his vision. Damon's daughter would subsequently go on to tease the actor about the movie. Whenever she talks about the movie, she calls it The Wall. And I'm like, come on, it's called The Great Wall. And she says, Dad, there's nothing great about that movie. <laughs> I like that. I yeah. like that. <laughs> That's endearing. Uh, this was. Huh, I wonder who the sp- sp- is Chinese sponsors? Is that what it is? I, d- I guess. I don't know the backers. I don't know who that. I don't know the producers. I don't know who that. I don't know who I that mean, is. Yeah. The this was director uh, Zhang's first film, almost entirely in English. Uh, Brian Cranston was in the early talks for the role of Ballard before William Defoe was cast. Um, let's see. Belief the Great Wall of China is only one man-made structure on Earth that can be seen from the naked eye from the International Space Station is only a myth. Uh, the nameless order is not nameless. <laughs> uh, in the first battle against the Taotai, the Spinier Tovar uses a red cape, much as it would a matador in a bullfight in Spain. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Matt Damon both starred in a movie as gang members infiltrating a police force. Uh, Matt Damon and Andy Lau, who played Wang, both starred in a movie as gang members infiltrating a police force. Uh and it's called internal affairs. I don't know. Um, yeah, I uh, that was the um, 
was the advisor guy. I'll tell you what I like about it. I liked like I thought the costumes were awesome. Yeah, you know, like it, it's it like, and I like. I like I mean, taking it's like Saint Seiya stuff, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like taking um, things that are like ancient history and then adding this mytholo- mythological element to yeah. it, like and then stylizing it. Yeah, yeah. Like this, like three hundred. Like you know what I mean when you like. I do, but the thing is, like, I think they chose the like. I think the movie to me would have been better. Better. Like I don't know. This is just personal taste, right? Right. If this wasn't the Great Wall, uh-huh. if this was just the wall, just a <laughs> a middle of no, a made up place uh-huh. or some kind of fantasy world, like the story can hold up, uh-huh. but not mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Like specifically because it does have some history. Mm-hmm. If you know anything of it, it's like that doesn't make sense. And also the I keep saying the numbers don't add up. Mm-hmm. You, you know, numbers don't lie. Right. Me. Right. 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 Like the length of the wall versus the amount of people on it versus how much food they need versus what's around versus one point where the aliens come from. Yeah. Like none of that shit makes like sense to me. And then like the aliens don't climb around the crater to the other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, they, they just come straight track down mine. that fucking hole. <laughs> yeah, straight like, down the pike. And then like, I, I don't know, man. It, 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 I, it just doesn't add up to me. Like it, it, it stops me from suspending my disbelief when I'm starting to think of the, the scale of things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's tons and tons and tons of like it, holes. And like they really suck at the job. Like for like a fucking million people army with fancy gear. Yeah, with fancy like, gear and shit. And two like, white, well, not white. Uh, two two European dudes just came and just start fucking on these things, and yeah. like teams of them with fucking fully armored and spears and shit couldn't fucking handle one. Yeah, I like, I, like come I, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they had the knowledge because they were the yeah. ones that were like aim for the eyes and yeah. everything else. They've been defending for sixty years at least. Right. They said these are smarter than sixty years ago, and they have all the gear and equipment. And some of them are there since they were five apparently yeah. and they trained all their life to suck yeah i don't know why i feel like in the trailer i saw dragons in it it's one of those things uh, a fucking uh what's Man- sinbad, Mandela. sinbad Man- as a fucking genie never yeah, happened yeah 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 uh let's see uh, read some of these like uh but yeah i i think part, there, there are um it had potential like parts of it had potential and it could, i think it could have been better yeah so yeah, I mean, I don't. Who, who knows if what Matt Damon is saying is true or not? Because it's hearsay, right? Yeah. But like, it makes sense. Like a lot of times, as we've seen over the years, like movies have and fiction have seemed to suffer because of studio pressure. Yeah, I, like, there's a, like a lot of DC stuff you would say has ha- that has happened. Too. Oh, for sure, and and probably still is happening. Yeah, so I can see that being true here, especially if it was like a Chinese backed. Endeavor, uh-huh. because the state is extremely good at pressuring. No, oh my God, you know everything and everything everyone there. So yeah, and I, I don't know. This is was this catered to the Chinese audience? I'm not. I don't know. I'm not sure what this. It, I'm it, not sure what this movie is for. Yeah, yeah. It feels marketed to an American audience, but knowing that it was a Chinese film and everything, I I just assumed it was an American. I, mean, film. I picked up a lot of like what. Not Chinese nationalism, but like kind of Chinese pride thing mm-hmm. that to me isn't really deserved, but which is what the state does, right? That's what China, China does. And right. Like, oh, this is fucking over the top, like pro Chinese people. Yeah. And I, I, there was interesting parts towards the end that could have been explored throughout the movie. The the political part. Mm-hmm. They were like, these people are out there living and dying, mm-hmm. protecting and then you see the royalty being what it is, and then the per- political advisors jostling for position, yeah, position yeah, and yeah. applying. I agree. Like, all that seems, seems to be interesting. And when the general comes and see like who they were defending, like that, that could have been something good there. drama. I agree. There. Like I agree. this is what I'm fucking defending. I agree. Like, you, people, you hiding behind a chair, and you, you know, yeah, and you fucking and yelling at her, yeah, and also like. Wakening of the beast is that was part of the problem right which, which I, I feel like it had things that could have made it better that i would have been interested to see no i think that that's all fair uh here's some some factual errors only one magnetic stone which can pacify the tao tai appeared in the movie the stone was brought in by william the european mercenary in reality chinese uh civilization first made compasses from magnetic stones in the han dynasty uh by the time point of this movie the compass had been widely used in navigation it shouldn't be hard to find more magnetic stones inside of china or or, or um 
I, I couldn't remember at the beginning. I'm like, what time period is this? Where white, yeah. people, yeah. white people are looking for black powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the wall is already built. And, and like, there's hot air balloons. Yeah, that's, well, really shitty hot shitty air balloons. shitty ones, yeah. Bro, is that? I was like, what? This is wild. They're just killing yeah, themselves. Yeah, uh, The drone Tautai's eye placement does not conduce to its position in the horde. The drone Tautai's eye placement does not conduce. Yeah, the, the queen and the guards have regular eyes. And the, oh, the right, right, right. As a protector and hunter for the queen, it would need the predator's forward-facing yes. eyes rather than the side eyes to allow for binoculars. Like fish. Dude, people are weird, man. Fish and deers have side eyes because they want like looking off a prey. It's, it curr- oh, its current design suggests the eye t- that it could be the prey. Yeah. Machinery inside the Great Wall is powered by water wheels upon which the water splashes pretty... Uh, Pretty rather than forcefully, prettily yeah, rather than it's force, not like forcefully down. Enough. And where did water come from anyway? And even worse, there can be no stream of water flowing above these mechanisms to provide the power source. Yeah, because they're on top of a mountain. When like that, numbers don't make sense. When we first see Lin May jumping off the wall to fight during her jump, in which she has a spear in each hand and does a backflip, one of the spears can be seen phasing through the rope when the two should have collided. That's interesting. And just cut her own rope and say, oh, fuck. Yeah, like just little shit like that is always yeah. fascinating to me. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's get out of here with um, uh, some some of uh, the reviews, which I think should probably be good fun if I can find them. I, but I think the coolest thing about it to me is kind of like the concept of it. Yeah, exactly. The concept had, and, and had the, legs. And the costumes. Like it was beautiful. It, it could have been something. And I liked that like the archers were red and the, this was blue mm-hmm. and all like, like and you called them Power Rangers. Because, I mean, like, which is I, funny. Yeah, at first, they did, when the four generals walked out in their colored costume, they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Power Rangers, bro. Um, the Great Wall, let's see. Uh, they watch w- without expectation. The Great Wall surprised me a lot. Uh, and I believe the fact that I watched the movie without expecting anything was important. Yes. Uh, I had only seen one trailer and I went to see it. I liked it a lot. We expect, we, I, I had low expectations and like, I was entertained enough. I wasn't mad I watched it, especially for this. Exercising your demons. Millions of people watching the 2017 Oscars would have seen Jimmy Kimmel roasting poor Matt Damon as part of their long running feud. At one point, he points out that Matt gave up the leading role in Manchester by the Sea to star in Chinese ponytail movie <laughs> that went to lose $80 million at the box office. Oh, wow. Did it? The Great Wall is that movie. So is it really that bad? Uh, well, it's no Manchester by the Sea for sure, but I don't think it's quite the total turkey that critics have been labeling it either. So, so it cost a hundred millions, and they they made twenty million. I guess that's what it sounds like. Yeah, Whew. yeah. Uh, the that's great, a lot of fucking money. The Great Wall of Poop. It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Not bold enough to really go over the top with the creatures of kung fu actions. As all all this really had going for it was the story. Uh, it's just there is no story. Well, not much of one. Matt Damon stars as William, a man who has been a soldier all of his life. He has a companion. They escaped uh, some desert outlaws while holding up at, for the night. Something wicked this way comes. Damon cuts off a leg. They are then captured by. Yeah, okay, that's just the plot. There was no wire foo. Not any general was. Yeah, there really, was no like real martial arts stuff going on. Not, uh, not a lot of good fight scenes. Yeah. Uh, Surprisingly. Not any general was really badass. Also, given the sheer number of creatures, there was simply no way in hell that few number of people could have defended the wall. The only positive aspect of this big old turd were the costumes. Yep. They were very pretty. Yep. Uh, rated PG-13 for unbelievable violence. <laughs> uh, bad movie all around, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And again, numbers don't add up. Uh, a silly film that takes itself too seriously. I'm not sure if it took itself too seriously. I feel like it, it was, I don't know. I, f- I feel like it knew what it was. Yeah, and I don't think it's all that, I don't think it's all that silly contextually. Like, you know what I mean? It's sci-fi. Yeah. Like, it's, you know what I mean? It's not, it's like, it's it, period I, sci-fi. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not. I, I do find sometimes like, um, like when I talk to people that don't get that element of it you know like like not necessarily for this film but i remember like when 300 was 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 coming around and people were like yeah like you know it's fun to watch but it's not accurate and it's like you know there's monsters and everything else and i'm like it's not trying to be accurate it's not it doesn't say historic (laughs) piece or you know but like documentary i think sometimes people do get the the misconception of something yeah you got it's a genre film yeah for sure. I mean, as a genre film, like as a monster movie, this, this is not bad, right? Like, we, yeah. I'm grading it as overall movie, but like, if you put it in context of just monster movies, it's a better, one of the better ones. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's all that much. You know, I would say it's comparable to Starship Troopers or something like that. Where it's I like, think Starship Troopers is better, though. So I haven't seen it in a long time. I'm not I, I sure. I watch it regularly. I'm not sure how I feel it holds up. 
Um, like the first one. I, I, I mean, I, I watch it at least once a year. I oh, really, really? I really love Starship Troopers. In my mind, it's like... Because it was because it's made to be campy. Like, right. It was made right. to be over the top, so it always holds up. Because mm. it's, it's not one of those things where it takes itself seriously at a time, and 20 years later, it's like, that's silly. Yeah, I think it's probably more fun to watch. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. And then I like, I like 40K, so that's a great 40K movie. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's like it's almost too close where it's aggravating for me. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, like just name like, them Imperial Guards and we'll be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I have anything else to say no. about it. Uh, Paul C. Uh, thank thanks, you. For thanks. The but, two hours that we spent on this. Thanks, but no thanks. Um, Good it, luck finding another one. He did Ghost in the Shell for us too. Well, they just need to. Uh, he needs. To, they just need to make something. Uh, like I was too bad last time I came out years ago, Joe. Yeah, sure that, that would have been the first one. <laughs> yeah, that would have been the first one. That was parts of that movie I like too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good parts. Like, yeah, Samurai so like, Bless Samurai is a pretty good movie. All, all kidding aside, it's a pretty good movie, man. This one? No, or Last Samurai. Last Samurai. Yeah, no, you it know, is. I just don't like that part, which the, is the main part, the white savior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, well, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, it's like uh. God, I, I I can't I can never remember which of Krista's parents is white. Mom, mom. So now the joke's not gonna be funny. I was like, it's like Krista's mom in many ways. Just yeah, I was thinking dogs don't have fucking oriental eyes. <laughs> I'll to level. I will never forget that. That's like because it was so innocent yeah. and ignorant at yeah. the same time. Like how yeah. your simple mind works. Yeah. <laughs> but then we saw a picture of that dog, and it was like, get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I want to do more of these. Yeah, I mean, I, what more time to like uh, with cross your new fingers schedule? With a, hopefully new schedules and in, oh, in the next month, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to see Cirque du Soleil tonight. Oh, which one? I don't know. It's something that's like thinking. They all have themes, you know. Yeah, whatever's in town currently. There's like one in DC, I think. That's what I'm going to. Oh, cool. I'm. I seen. I seen them a couple of times. So I'm yeah, they're good fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 I. I. I uh, guilty pleasure. I like the music oftentimes to them. It's like this, like, it's like this, like, electronic circ carnival esque. Yeah. You know? I mean, is, is, it, is it a guilty pleasure? I mean, I like it. It's meant to be. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely I mean, it's not highway, memorable. It's definitely highway music. I'm not like, yeah, yeah. It's not memorable, but like, it goes with the show. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. All right. I'm out of here. Peace.